continuing our debates, I would like to give the floor to Madam Rosler because she has some uh, technical information to provide to us. Merci, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just a few announcements which are important for the proceedings of this session. This morning we had a saturation of the Wi-Fi system in the room. There were only two antennas, so I had a meeting with the Cambodian team. There will be two more antennas uh, added so uh, that you have all access to Wi-Fi in the room. Some of you also had problems with your headphones. There have been changes made to the headphones. For those who still have problems with the headphones and switching channels, please contact the technicians in the back of the room. Please wave the technicians in the back of the room here, for me on the left-hand side, for you on the right-hand side, so that you can uh, exchange your headphones. Then it's very important to note that in this committee room, we have only the official documents of this session. Apparently at lunchtime, an NGO went around with other documents. Those documents should be distributed on the tables outside of this room. So please distribute it only outside of this room. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Rosler. And uh, of course, I would like to ask to the observers and uh, um, the people attending this uh, committee session to uh, uh, distribute the documents that they have uh, to provide, of course, outside of the, of the room, as uh, Madame Brosler has just mentioned. And uh, having said that, we are going to come back to uh, the draft resolution that we were discussing this morning. And uh, I would like to ask uh, our rapporteur to present the text uh, containing the amendments uh, that were proposed this morning. So please, Madam, could you please proceed? Thank you. May we have it on the screen? Um, we did a synthesis uh, merging of paragraph five and six. I will read it to you. Uh, encourages all parties concerned to further enhance and improve dialogue and communication within the framework of the implementation of the Convention's mechanisms and requests to the World Heritage Center to present a plan and the report on the actions taken and progress achieved at the 38th session of the World Heritage Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Rapporteur. Now I turn to our committee members to uh, ask for their comments if this is the case. If not, we can proceed to the adoption of this uh, paragraph as it is amendment, amended. So, it's okay. She says adopt. I don't give too much. It's okay. It's acceptable for all of you. So, may I say then that this draft position 37.5C, it is adopted as amended. Thank you very much. And now uh, I invite you to move to item 5D of our agenda, which is the revised pact initiative strategy. Please note that document WHC 1337-COM-5D and WHC 1337-COM-INF-5D will be the basis of, this, of our discussion. Uh, now I would like to invite Mrs. Vujicic Lugasi from the World Heritage Center to briefly present this item. Madam, could you please proceed? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen. In 2011, by decision 35.5A, the committee invited the World Heritage Center to present at its 36th session a new pact initiative strategy taking into account the results of the evaluation of the external auditor of the PACT initiative. In 2012, by decision 36.5A2, the committee, considering the upcoming meeting uh, of the open-ended working group in charge of producing an implementation plan for the recommendations of the external auditor, and mindful that the UNESCO's policy framework for strategic partnerships will be presented for consideration to the coming executive board sessions, 
requested the Centre to present at its 37th session a revised pact initiative strategy. The document uh, that you have seen provides, first of all, a background of the development of the Centre's partnerships initiative since its inception in 2002. It then presents the current status of the partnerships work at UNESCO level and indicates the reference material used to prepare the revised pact strategy. Finally, it outlines the revised strategy that takes into account, one, the recommendations of the 2010-2011 audit, two, the implementation plan proposed by the open-ended working group on the recommendations of the external auditor, three, the decision adopted during the 190th and 191st executive board session regarding the organization's framework for strategic partnerships, Four, the debates of the 36th session of the committee. And five, the lessons learned from the Centre's partnerships work since 2002. The annex of this document presents an inventory of ongoing and envisaged World Heritage Partnerships as of end April this year. The information document, um, WHC 13-37, come IMF 5D provides the full report of the second meeting of the open-ended working group on the implementation of the auditor's recommendations regarding PACT. The working group met on 1st February this year and could convene thanks to the support of Belgium, the Netherlands and Switzerland. Before presenting the revised PACT strategy contained in the working document, I would like to deliver a brief report provided by the Rapporteur of the Open-Ended Working Group in the name of the Chairperson of the Group, His Excellency David Hamadziripi, Ambassador of Zimbabwe, as both of them are not present at this session. Namely, uh, the Working Group identified six main areas for improvement of PACT. One, the conservation of World Heritage Sites needs to be put at the core of the objectives of private sector partnerships. It recommended that the Centre promote the allocations of donations to the World Heritage Fund so that the World Heritage Committee can indicate the conservation priorities for which the fund should be used, for example, by linking donations directly to the conservation of specific sites on the danger list. Two, the working group debated extensively the use of the World Heritage Emblem. The two main issues were identified, namely ensuring a balanced partnership with equal benefits for all parties and limiting the commercial use of the emblem. The working group indicated that the program should not try to seek more visibility as a name in itself, but should valorize sufficiently the use of the emblem. With regard to the use of the emblem, since the commercial use is supposed to be exceptional, the working group asked the Centre to consult the committee in advance on the use of the emblem for commercial purposes when the timeline allows for it. If not, the exceptionality of the use of the emblem for commercial purposes needs to be justified afterwards. The working group... Three, the working group emphasized the importance for the organization of having right expertise for entering into partnerships with the private sector. The specificity of this activity requires that the Center and UNESCO avail themselves of professional expert advice, whether it is external or internal, when establishing and negotiating private partnership agreements. Four, the working group highlighted several principles with regard to strengthening the management of partnerships. The partnership framework should include elements which allow a strengthened monitoring and evaluation of partnerships since a weak monitoring of PACT partnerships had been observed. Long-term partnerships are also encouraged. Five, the working group commended the Centre for the current tem template for reporting to the committee. It was noted that the strengthened management of partnerships as well as the traceability of the funds should allow the Centre to improve the analytical information given to the committee. And six, with regard to the new PACT strategy, the working group highlighted the importance of formulating a long-term strategic vision for entering into public-private partnerships and the use of the emblem, as well as a time frame for the implementation of the strategy. In its closing remarks, the working group indicated the importance of having a strong framework for private sector partnerships within which the centre has the flexibility to operate. It remains important that states parties decide on the priorities and that the partnerships concluded under PACT follow these principles. 
The working group drew attention to paragraph 79 of the full report in which the external auditor highlights a triple risk, a risk of deterioration of the World Heritage Conservation Partnerships, a risk of banalization of the emblem of the Convention and the UNESCO logo, and the risk of losing sense when seeking visibility becomes more prominent than World Heritage Conservation itself. So this was the brief report presented in the name of the working group. Uh, please allow me now to present the main elements of the revised pact strategy contained in the working document. The Partnerships for Conservation Initiative, or PACT, seeks to foster private sector participation in the global stakeholder engagement for preservation of world heritage. PACT was created to increase financial revenues and to enrich the dialogue with stakeholders. The long-term vision for the PACT initiative is closely associated to the strategic action plan for the implementation of the Convention 2012-2020 adopted by the 18th General Assembly. The long-term vision keeps in mind conservation of world heritage as the primary goal of the Convention. It recognizes that, a quote now from paragraph 9 of the Strategic Action Plan, conservation and communication are complementary tasks as increased awareness and knowledge of world heritage objectives can increase commitment to conserve, engage with, and support world heritage, unquote. Guided by the Convention's strategic objectives and the goals of the Strategic Action Plan, PACT shall proactively seek to establish partnerships which lead to a sustainable conservation of World Heritage Sites, enhanced credibility of the Convention, efficient and increased capacity building for all World Heritage stakeholders, improved communication for a wide recognition of World Heritage as the highest standard of heritage and conservation as per World Heritage Goal 4.1 on awareness raising in the Strategic Action Plan, and increased participation of communities in all processes of the Convention, including reaping sustainable benefits of inscription on the list and allowing for sustainable development of the World Heritage Sites while preserving their outstanding universal value. I would like to stress that PACT, besides being guided by its regulatory framework adopted by the 29th session of the Committee in 2005, also follows closely UNESCO's existing partnership directives included in the Administrative Manual, as well as the UN Global Compact Principles and UN Business Guidelines. PACT is also committed to improving procedures and practices to ensure efficiency in following up partnership development and implementation. Consultations with national commissions are undertaken prior to signature of every new partnership. In-house procedures are fully respected through collaboration with UNESCO's Bureau of Strategic Planning. Consultative entities involving partners as well as relevant internal structures and external organizations are envisaged for major partnerships. Partnerships with the private sector are prim primarily developed to raise additional financial and in-kind contributions and to compensate for the lack of resources dedicated to conservation, including international assistance. Such contributions are used to help the implementation of activities dedicated to priority programs, sites in danger, capacity building, and to support the Center's communication, education, and partnership activities, including managing the World Heritage Center's website and the World Heritage Convention's archives. The Center is increasingly focusing on long-term strategic partnerships and moving away from small transactional ones. The PACT strategy, as outlined in the document, is guided by the following eight principles which strictly adhere to the way in which UNESCO engages with partners. One, shared objectives, definition of a common purpose with mutual benefits that is consistent with UNESCO's mandate and the mission of the World Heritage Convention. Two, equality. Within the partnership, partners should have equal status. Three, legality. The partners with whom the World Heritage Center engages should have an established legal status and a demonstrable track record and should be validated by the state party of their origin. Four, clarity. Each party's responsibilities, roles, and contributions must be clearly defined. Five, transparency. Both parties must be able to raise issues concerning the quality of the working relationship and the roles and contributions of each party. 
Six, fairness. No unfair advantage to any individual partner should be provided. Seven, accountability. All forms of cooperation must be reality-based, action-oriented, and should produce concrete measurable results that are subject to periodical evaluations. And eight, sustainability. The scope and results of cooperation should be sustainable beyond the partnership's duration without dependence on ongoing contribution by one or both partners, thereby ensuring ownership by the end beneficiaries. Partnerships, as you know, are subject to reporting at every annual World Heritage Committee session, and uh, between the sessions, information on partnerships, including the signed agreements, is permanently available on a password-protected uh, website, web pages of the Center's uh, website for states parties uh, to consult. In addition to establishing strategic partnerships, resource mobilization sources to be further explored are online donations, grants, contributions from philanthropists, fundraising events, crowdfunding, membership schemes, etc. This will be developed in line with World Heritage Goal 6, Activity 646 of the Implementation Plan of the Strategic Action Plan for exploring ways to increase contributions to the World Heritage Fund leading to increased contribution of private sponsorship to target priorities. The external audit and the open-ended working group stress the importance of traceability of funds. The World Heritage Center now keeps systematically organized electronic archives and an up-to-date financial chart showing the amount of income expected for each partnership, the funds received, and the expenditures made. Income and expenditures are also reflected in UNESCO's finance and budget system. The chart and other established reporting tools are used to ensure quality reporting to the state's parties and transparency, notably through the annex that you have seen containing the inventory of partnerships. The open-ended working group also insisted on evaluation of partnerships. For each partnership, Funds are allocated for evaluating efficiency, impact, and sustainability of the partnership based on performance indicators elaborated at the beginning of each partnership. Furthermore, a provision concerning self-evaluations and external evaluations is included in the general conditions of all UNESCO standard agreements with the private sector. Specific communication plans essential for working with the private sector are created to enhance the visibility of partnership implementation and the impact of the partnership on the goals and objectives of the Convention, in particular in case of the use of the World Heritage Emblem. The use of the emblem itself is an important part of the PACT strategy. It follows the principles in the operational guidelines and is strictly regulated according to the terms of each signed agreement. Every resource using the name and logo of UNESCO and World Heritage is subject to approval by UNESCO. PACT will further explore, in collaboration with relevant UNESCO sectors and external experts, the development of a clear branding strategy for World Heritage as per Goal 4, Activity 421 of the Implementation Plan of the Strategic Action Plan. Finally, as per the decision of the 36th Committee session, requesting the Centre to continue informing the Committee with regard to partnerships in an analytical manner, the annex of the working document contains two tables. Table 1 provides a list of ongoing World Heritage Centre partnerships with the private sector and foundations as of the end of April 2013. The table has been improved by adding indications if a partnership is new, if renewal is envisaged, or if the partnership has been terminated since the last report to the committee. Table 2 presents the partnerships envisaged, which are currently undergoing internal evaluation or external validation. The draft decision may be found on page 7 of the English version and page 8 of the French version. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Madam, for your uh, presentation. And now I would like to remind you that we are also invited to adopt the draft decision included in document WHC 1337-COM5D.3. And now I would like to invite committee members, if you have comments on this document, please.
I see none. So uh, I think we can uh, adopt the draft decision 37.5D adopted. Thank you very much. Nous passons maintenant à l'examen du point suivant qui concerne le rapport sur les célébrations du 40e anniversaire de la Convention qui est contenu dans les documents WHC 13-37 comme 5E. Et pour présenter ce point, je donne la parole à Mme Vujicic Lugassi du Centre de patrimoine mondial. Madame, je vous en prie, s'il vous plaît. Toujours la même. Merci. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. The World Heritage Community celebrated the four decades of the existence of the World Heritage Convention by focusing on the theme World Heritage and Sustainable Development, the role of local communities. This reflects the growing concern about mainstreaming sustainable development into the processes of the Convention and the preservation of the site's outstanding universal values while improving social and economic conditions of local communities. The coordination of the 2012 activities was undertaken by the World Heritage Center in close collaboration with states parties, UNESCO field offices, advisory bodies, UNESCO Category 2 centers dedicated to World Heritage, youth organizations, and other partners and stakeholders. The anniversary year was officially launched by the UNESCO Director General on 7 November 2011 at the 18th General Assembly. The ceremonial launch took place on 30 January 2012 at UNESCO with a concert by Goodwill Ambassador and musician Herbie Hancock and wide attention given to it by the press and audiovisual media. The decision to celebrate the anniversary throughout the regions of the world rather than limiting the celebrations to UNESCO headquarters or at one single event, proved to be a great success. The committee's appeal inviting states parties to celebrate the anniversary and promote the convention was widely followed and throughout 2012, 122 events took place in 47 countries. Moreover, 50 World Heritage Young, young Volunteers work camps in 25 countries were organized during this year. The ECOMOS Monuments and Sites Day, 18 April, was dedicated to World Heritage, and the IUCN World Conservation Congress in September 2012, held in, on Jeju Island, Republic of Korea, held a 40th anniversary celebration and adopted resolutions specifically related to the convention. The report on the celebration activities that took place around the world has just been published in English and French and has been distributed to you in the delegates' bags. I hope that you have all seen this report. Throughout 2012, the Center had numerous and substantial communications with states parties who provided us with good examples related to the theme. These examples have been promoted through our website in special 40th anniversary publications and will continue to be used in our future communication materials. The Center created a specific 40th anniversary logo in order to ensure increased visibility of uh, the anniversary year. The logo was well appreciated by states parties as we have received and approved 55 requests for use by different states parties and organizations who have used it in close to 300 different supports such as videos, publications, websites, uh, postcards, newspaper, newspaper articles, maps, badges, etc. Dedicated 40th anniversary web pages on the center's website were launched already in November 2011 with a map of the world highlighting all events. A number of high-level personalities gave video statements about the 40th anniversary that, would, that were broadcast on our website. While unfortunately no budget was available to assist the different activities throughout the regions, the Center developed a series of communication components to promote the anniversary year and to assist states parties in their celebratory activities. I mentioned already the dedicated web pages. A special brochure was produced for the launch of the celebrations as well as commemorative pins. The material has been used by a number of countries who have translated uh, the 40th anniversary brochure and the World Heritage Map of 2012 into their national languages and have disseminated these through their own channels. 
The World Heritage Review published special focuses on the anniversary throughout 2012, with the November issue fully dedicated to sustainable development. The Center co-published, in collaboration with Cambridge University Press, a seminal publication, World Heritage Benefits Beyond Borders. It was launched in November 2012 at the closing event of the year in Kyoto. The book is richly illustrated and features a thematic collection of 26 case studies which provide thorough understanding of World Heritage sites and their <coughs> OUV <coughs> sorry, in the context of sustainable development and illustrate the benefits to local communities. After the original English version, translations are currently being prepared in French, Korean, and Thai language. The book is being sold both through UNESCO and uh, Cambridge University Press channels. The 40th anniversary attracted wide attention in the media and on TV with programs dedicated to world heritage and numerous interviews conducted with the UNESCO Director General and other UNESCO officials and state party officials. A number of World Heritage Center partners have actively collaborated in the anniversary activities, among others Panasonic, with special exhibitions, programs on World Heritage sponsored on National Geographic TV, an awareness raising campaign for young people, the Smithsonian Institution by creating a web portal and a virtual exhibition, which was launched in July 2012. NHK, the Japan Broadcasting Corporation, by providing videos on World Heritage for the use on UNESCO's website. TBS, the Tokyo Broadcasting Channel, provided the center in 2012 with 50 short films on World Heritage for use on our website and in our communication material. History Channel has produced a number of public service announcements, notably two short inspiring films on World Heritage with brief statements in a dozen different languages, which is featured on the center's website. 2012 was also the opportunity to develop, as per the request of the 35th session of the committee, a one-off initiative for recognizing and rewarding best practice for successful and sustainable management. 23 states parties responded to the invitation by the center to propose World Heritage Sites that they regard as best practice examples. Out of the 28 entries received, a 10-member selection committee recognized the historic town of Vigan in the Philippines for its successful and sustainable management achieved with relatively limited resources, for involving the local community in many aspects of sustainable conservation and management of the property, and for a multifaceted approach to the protection of the site. A certificate of recognition was presented to the mayor of Vigan at the closing event of the 40th anniversary. In line with the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy adopted by the committee in 2011, the best practices shared through this initiative are now part of the communication tools for capacity building for World Heritage Conservation and Management activities. They can be consulted on a dedicated center's website, dedicated pages. Following this first initiative, the committee may wish to establish regular recognitions of this kind, leading to exchanges of best practices for the benefit of the sites and their conservation. Such a development would be consistent with the committee's capacity building strategy, notably actions 7.1 and 7.3, and would be an integral part of the implementation of the strategic action plan and vision for the future of the convention, notably goals 1, 4, and 5. Should the committee decide to establish such recognitions, for example, on a biennial basis, the budget needed for one cycle would be approximately 45,000 US dollars to be covered through extra budgetary sources to be identified. Initial steps were also made in consultation with the advisory bodies towards the establishment of a site management network with the goal to facilitate exchange and sharing of information on best practices in world heritage management. While existing networks should continue to be used, reflections are ongoing about setting up a new management network, which would need to have a clear added value. The creation of a new network would also have financial implications as it will need hosting, development, and maintenance. Funds for continuing this initiative would also need to be identified. The numerous events which brought together managers, administrators, experts, and community members have resulted in a number of outcome documents and a large set of recommendations on policies and actions that could be adopted and implemented in the context of the Convention. 
The Centre is currently compiling the outcome documents produced in this context and analysing them with respect to their relevance to sustainable development aspects and for their possible implications on the processes of the Convention. This analysis will then inform the development of a policy on the integration of sustainable development into the processes of the Convention to be presented to the Committee at its 38th session next year, as per Decision 36.5c. And last but not least, to conclude the 40th anniversary year, the Government of Japan and the World Heritage Centre co-organized the closing event in Kyoto on six, uh, from 6 to 8 November 2012. This was made possible thanks to the generous contribution of the host government, both as direct organizer as well as through the Japanese Funds and Trust financial allocation to the center. At the event, the year's activities and conclusions drawn from the regional and thematic events were presented. The agenda included a series of panel discussions on themes such as sustainable social, economic and environmental development, disaster risk management, capacity building and public and private partnerships. A youth program preceded the main event. Open to all stakeholders, the event provided a rare occasion to exchange views among an eclectic group of people from diverse backgrounds, cultural and natural heritage experts, state party and local government representatives, advisory bodies, NGOs, academics, and local citizens. Over 600 persons from 61 countries participated. The outcome document of the meeting, the Kyoto Vision, stresses, among, among other, the importance of people-centered conservation and concludes with a call for action, appealing to the international community to, among other points, ensure effective involvement of local communities, indigenous peoples, experts and youth in all aspects of world heritage conservation. The proceedings of the Kyoto event will be published in English and French ahead of the 19th General Assembly this year. Finally, please allow me to recall that a very large and important part of the above-mentioned activities and publications would not have been possible without the generous assistance of the Japanese Funds and Trusts, which has provided substantial and indispensable financial means for marking the celebration. So the Centre wishes to thank warmly the Japanese government for their invaluable contribution towards the anniversary year. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Madam, for your uh, presentation, your complete presentation on this report. Uh, I will pass to Spanish for one minute. Eh, igualmente, me informa, me informa la Secretaría que eh, los órganos asesores quisieran pronunciarse sobre este punto, así que voy a dar la palabra brevemente a cada uno de ellos para presentar sus observaciones. Eh, comencemos con la IUCN. Por favor, señores, ustedes tienen la palabra. Thank you, Chair. IUCN would like to add its thanks to the Government of Japan for the very successful and productive celebration of the Convention's 40th anniversary in Kyoto last year, and for all the other events organized by states, parties, and other parties, uh, other partners, excuse me. We'd like to make two additional points regarding item 5E. With respect to paragraph 27, referencing the possibility of recognizing best practices and excellence in management of World Heritage Sites on a regular basis, IUCN would like to note that it is currently developing and piloting a green list for well-managed protected areas, which will include World Heritage Sites. The green list is due to be launched at the World Parks Congress in Sydney in November 2014. With respect to paragraphs 29 and 30, IUCN would like to note that establishing a site manager's network for natural and mixed sites could be done via IUCN's World Commission on Protected Areas. The World Parks Congress would be an excellent venue for launching such a network. We look forward to working with the World Heritage Center and our fellow advisory bodies to seek extra budgetary support for this work should the committee choose to adopt draft decision 37.5E. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias por su información. Ahora quisiera dar la palabra al representante de ICOMOS. Por favor, ustedes tienen la palabra. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Uh, the 40th anniversary of the Convention provided the opportunity for an immense program of international reflection on the achievements and the future of the World Heritage Convention, and ICOMOS was proud to participate and contribute to this worldwide program. It was indeed an extremely busy and creative year. I will not itemize the many important outcomes and experiences that we derive from it. Suffice it to say 
as Ms. Vujicic Lugasi said already, that ICOM has identified the 40th anniversary as our theme for the International Days on Monuments and Sites for 2012, and dozens of ECOMOS conferences, exhibits, workshops, and lectures were held under the sponsorship of our national committees and international scientific committees throughout the world. The process of thinking and reflecting is therefore still underway. ECOMOS particularly congratulates the State Party of Japan for the clear vision that it has manifested so repeatedly and which it did so brilliantly in convening and hosting the closing events of the 40th celebration of the convention in Kyoto, an event where we had the opportunity to look back at four decades of success as well as to look forward to an even more effective implementation of the convention. Many ideas and initiatives came forward, came forward on how to make the convention much more far-reaching and more inclusive, especially in areas that are underrepresented in the World Heritage List. Progress was also made on effectively linking heritage and socioeconomic development, which for ICUMOS is a priority area and that was the topic of our last General Assembly celebrated in 2011 in, at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris under the sponsorship of Mrs. Irina Bokova. For ICUMOS, there's no more unpressing, pressing and important matter than embedding the centrality of culture in development and I was pleased to hear so many of the distinguished speakers at the opening ceremony of this committee session touch specifically on that shared work. I will mention only one further issue arising for the 40th anniversary program in Kyoto that is particularly encouraging from the point of view of ICUMOS and of the international heritage community that uses the World Heritage Convention as the basic te textbook to guide its work. I am referring to the continuing work guided and supported by Japan to explore and deepen our, under, our understanding of the nature of cultural heritage by following up on the Himeji Declaration that focuses on the increasing recognition of the universality of the principles of the Nara document, as well as of its role as an international instrument for grasping the nature of authenticity and integrity in an infinity of cultural contexts. This is timely given that the 20th anniversary of the Nara document will coincide next year with the 50th anniversary of the Venice Charter, which is the foundational document of ECOMOS and whose ongoing relevance we will also be discussing over next year. We look forward to celebrate this event by expanding knowledge and making heritage principles more universally acceptable. Thank you. Muchas gracias al representante de ICOMOS. Ahora doy la palabra al representante del ICROM, igualmente sobre este punto. El señor tiene la palabra. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, ICROM welcomes the report on the 40th anniversary celebration uh, for, of the World Heritage Convention on the theme World Heritage and Sustainable Development, the role of local communities. And we note that many of the activities and results mentioned in the report are strongly linked to capacity building initiatives for states' parties, for professionals, and most importantly for communities. We thank all of the states' parties who were involved. Japan has already been mentioned, but many others, Korea, Norway, and, and many others, held events over the course of the last, uh, of, of the last year. As part of these celebrations, ECROM, in cooperation with the World Heritage Center, implemented a workshop on world heritage and sustainable development. Uh, this workshop took place in April of 2012 as part of our Conservation of the Built Heritage course. And a training module specifically on the theme of world heritage and sustainable development is under, uh, under development. Uh, we also continue to implement other activities in regard to sustainable, uh, sustainable development and involving communities in our Living Heritage program. ECROM notes that the proposal within the working document uh, for incorporating the biennial recognition of best practice and also the development of a network of site managers, uh, and they are found within the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy. ECROM notes that these activities, in particular the creation of the new network of site managers, will be resource intensive, but we look forward to working with the World Heritage Center, with advisory bodies, and with other uh, organizations in the field and states' parties uh, to develop a realistic scope for this project and a realistic approach uh, in, a, in a way that we can then realize these ideas uh, and carry them forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me the floor. Muchas gracias a usted, señor, por sus comentarios. Eh, ahora quisiera pasar a la palabra a los miembros del comité que tuvieran comentarios sobre este punto, así que los invito a tomar la palabra. Veo al 
Distinguido embajador del Japón, por favor, señor, tiene la palabra. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, taking this opportunity, uh, Japan de delegation, I would like to express uh, our many thanks to all those who attended the Kyoto Conference last November and to the <coughs> World Heritage Center uh, for making it a big success. Especially, we are very much pleased that Kyoto, at the Kyoto Conference, the final document entitled uh, Kyoto Vision was successfully uh, formulated, and uh, which we hope will be a very significant and uh, meaningful document for the future of this convention. Thank you once again. Thank you. Gracias a usted, señor embajador. Como miembro del comité, quisiera tomar la palabra sobre este punto. La palabra es de ustedes. Un miembro del Comité África del Sur. La palabra es suya. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the 40th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention happened against the backdrop of the Rio Plus 20 meetings, and the synergies between conservation and sustainable development were accordingly highlighted. It's a known fact that, the African, uh, that Africa and the African region is endowed with rich natural and cultural resources alongside high levels of poverty. Um, this underscores particularly the need to find a balance between conservation and development. In this context, the South African government is pleased to have co-hosted a number of awareness-raising events in celebration of the rich endowment of cultural and natural heritage in the country and in the region. Amongst these events was the One Day on Earth geotagged archive and documentary showcasing the diversity, conflict, tragedy, and triumph that occurred on this single day throughout the world. This was held in one of our prestigious World Heritage Sites, the Isimangaliso World Heritage Site. We also hosted the African Experts Workshop on managing the impacts of development and extractive activities in and around World Heritage Sites in response to decision 35-COM10A, co-hosted with the World Heritage Center and the African World Heritage Fund. A dialogue with communities on how to better manage South Africa's rich biological and cultural resources for the benefit of all was also held, and a high-level ministerial dialogue on preserving world heritage whilst contributing to sustainable development through partnerships with the private sector and local communities. These interventions mentioned above have translated into a South African Mining and Biodiversity Guideline, which was signed by the Ministers of Environment and Mineral Resources last week Thursday. For South Africa, conservation and development are two sides of the same coin, especially for us as a developing country. South Africa therefore supports the decision and over and above the recommendations makes a special plea for support of the best practice initiative in order to encourage state parties to protect and manage their World Heritage Sites in a sustainable manner. Thank you. Gracias a usted, señor representante de Sudáfrica. ¿Algún otro miembro del comité quisiera tomar la palabra en este punto? Veo que por ahora los miembros no quieren hacer uso de la palabra, así que les voy a pedir su autorización para dar la palabra a los observadores. Por favor, señora, si pudiera, señor, si pudiera usted identificarse, por favor. Tiene la palabra. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Max Oft. I'm from the uh, Association of Indigenous Village Leaders in Suriname. Under the activities organized uh, under, during the 40th anniversary year was the International Expert Workshop on the World Heritage Convention and Indigenous Peoples held in September last year in Copenhagen. The workshop highlighted that throughout the world, World Heritage Sites have potentially big impacts on the rights and lives of Indigenous Peoples, sometimes positive but sometimes very negative impacts such as forced evictions, denial to our traditional lands and resources, criminalization of traditional lifestyles. 
the workshop emphasized that World Heritage operations must be made consistent with the current day standards on the rights of indigenous peoples, particularly the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which was adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2007 and which is a universally endorsed human rights standard that UN bodies and UN member states are required to respect and implement. The workshop asked that the World Heritage Operational Guidelines are revised in order to be harmonized with the UN Declaration, in particularly free, prior, and informed consent, and a set of proposed amendments for the inclusion of FPIC um, have been elaborated. The workshop also called for a mechanism of direct participation of indigenous peoples and for our own representation in nomination and management processes. The report is available online on the UNESCO um, website, and we also have some copies with us. We hope that within the, ex within the um, consultative body these days, the recommendations will be uh, taken into account. Thank you very much. Gracias a usted, señor, por sus comentarios muy importantes. Eh, ahora, entonces, los invito eh, a pasar a el examen del proyecto de decisión contenido en el documento 37.5e, que figura en el párrafo 3 del documento que nos ha sido presentado. Los invito, entonces, a la Secretaría, por favor, si puede reflejar en la pantalla el proyecto de decisión. Lo tenemos entonces en la pantalla. Si hubiera algunos comentarios o enmiendas, los invito en este momento. Veo la delegación de Japón. Japón, señor, tiene la palabra. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Small comment. Uh, para 3 and para 4 of this uh, draft uh, resolution request, uh, uh, World Heritage Center and advisory bodies to take, uh, uh, to seek uh, extra budgetary funding to take new uh, initiatives. We consider these initiatives desirable and even uh, forward-looking to meet World Heritage goals. At the same time, however, that we know that the World Heritage Center is short of staff and financial resources needed. Likewise, uh, advisory bodies uh, seems to be overloaded uh, with a lack of funds as well. So given these circumstances, we are uh, a little worried if uh, those, this draft resolution will add new uh, workload to those organizations or World Heritage Center and advisory bodies while facing increasing difficulties in implementing World Heritage Convention statu statutory duties. So we would like to uh, uh, we would like World Heritage Center and advisory bodies to continue to spare no effort uh, to work on these duties as you have done so far. Thank you very much. Gracias a usted, señor delegado de Japón. Je vois le Mali. Merci, vous avez la parole. Ah, merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est par rapport à la décision 37.5e. Nous sommes en train de rédiger un, un paragraphe par rapport à l'idée de capitaliser les différents, les différents événements qui ont eu lieu. Il ne s'agit pas seulement de célébrer, mais il s'agit aussi de matérialiser pour les générations futures. Il y a, il y a, il y a eu des, des documents de valeur. Il serait souhaitable quand même de capitaliser les résultats de ces éléments, de ces, de ces rencontres ou alors de ces documents-là. Donc, nous allons proposer un paragraphe par rapport à ça. Thank you. Eh, muchas gracias, señor delegado de Mali. Eh, quisiera present, eh, hacer una pregunta al distinguido delegado de Japón eh, sobre lo que nos acaba de mencionar. ¿Es alguna propuesta adicional sobre el texto o era una declaración justamente reconociendo la importancia del tema? Well, we are not making any uh, uh, amendment, just comment. Thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification. Entonces, quisiera pedirle al delegado de Mali si nos pudiera hacer llegar a la Secretaría 
su propuesta para poderla reflejar en el texto. ¿Tenemos algún otro comentario sobre este tema? No veo ninguno, así que entonces esperamos la, ver reflejada en pantalla la propuesta del delegado de Mali. Gracias. Entonces voy a pasar la palabra al relator para que por favor nos lea eh, la adición que propone el delegado de Mali sobre el texto. Merci, Merci monsieur. Euh, je vous lis paragraphe, nouveau paragraphe 4. Demande au Centre du patrimoine mondial de penser à capitaliser les résultats issus des célébrations du 40e anniversaire de la Convention. Euh, et je vous prie, euh, dans le futur, de soumettre les amendements, pour ne pas perdre de temps, comme maintenant, de soumettre les amendements en avance, s'il vous plaît, comme on vous a demandé hier euh, à la session d'orientation. Merci. Si hubiera comentarios sobre esta propuesta de Mali, no veo ninguno. Entonces, ¿podríamos pensar que es aceptable para todos? Tal vez los colegas de Francia nos pudieran decir si está conforme a el lenguaje en francés. Je vois l'Ethiopie, monsieur, vous avez la parole. Bon, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to comment on the English version. Do we need to use results resulting, or we can only remain on uh, the World Heritage Center to build upon the results from the celebration? Why do we need the resulting? I think it's a repetition. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Uh, Yo estoy, por supuesto, de acuerdo con lo que usted acaba de comentar, así que si el colega de Mali estuviera de acuerdo, podríamos entonces corregir eh, el texto para eh, que no sea redundante en este punto. Y ahora eh, veo que la delegación de Francia quisiera hacernos una precisión, entonces les paso la palabra para ello. Dans une première approche, Monsieur le Président, nous pourrions proposer pour le paragraphe 4, euh, demande par ailleurs aux organisations consultatives en concertation avec le centre de rechercher un financement extra-budgétaire afin de développer euh, pour son examen lors de la prochaine session. Et le, et le, reste, le reste est lourd mais compréhensible. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup pour vos commentaires. Donc, euh, si on est tous d'accord avec cette précision, on peut prendre note de cet amendement et on va le refléter sur le texte, ainsi que le, euh, la proposition du Mali. Donc, euh, maintenant, je ne vois pas de commentaires ou de objections sur cette euh, proposition, sur ce texte. Donc, on passe maintenant euh, à l'adoption euh, de la décision. Donc, euh, cette décision, le projet de décision 37,5E, il est donc adopté. Merci beaucoup. Chers collègues, nous devons maintenant examiner le point 6 de notre ordre du jour qui concerne le suivi de la stratégie du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités et rapport d'avancement sur le centre de catégorie 2 associé au patrimoine mondial. Le document qui est relatif à ces points est le document WHC 13-37 comme 6 que vous avez devant vous. Considérant leur lien étroit de ce rapport sont présentés conjointement dans ce même document, je souhaite donc donner la parole tout d'abord aux représentants de l'ICROM pour ce qui concerne la stratégie du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités. Donc, messieurs, vous avez la parole. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um... I make this presentation on behalf of the two advisory bodies, IUCN and, and also ECOMOS, and indeed also in conjunction with the World Heritage Center. Mr. Bocardi will be presenting in the latter half of this, of this presentation. Um, it, just to uh, emphasize the point that you already made, Mr. Chairman, um, capacity building used to be covered under Item 9, while the reports on the Category 2 centers were under uh, uh, Item 6. But since there's such a strong relationship between the capacity building strategy uh, and the work of the Category 2 centers, all which deal with, in one form or another, with capacity building, uh, it was thought that it would make more sense, it would be a more seamless presentation to put these two presentations into, into one presentation covering, uh, covering capacity building. Um, next slide, please. Um, I would first like to recall uh, the fact that um, the World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy was adopted by this committee in 2011, and last year in 2012 in St. Petersburg, a World Heritage Capacity Building Program at the international level was welcomed uh, by the committee when presented uh, by ECRUM. Um, the report uh, that I will make for you now is a report on the progress of the activities over the course of the last year. Um, 
As you can see, over the, over the last year, um, the primary activities that we carried out under the capacity building program were workshops to strengthen the uh, network of the advisory bodies. This was an area that the committee uh, had requested uh, previously, and uh, we carried three workshops out uh, over the course of this past year in the regions that you can see on the screen. Um, over the life of the program, we've carried out seven workshops, and we've, uh, we've trained 91 professionals from 57 countries. Um, and the idea would then be to be able to use these experts um, from the different regions uh, as we move forward uh, within the work of the advisory bodies. In addition to that, we've also uh, had some um, collaborations with World Heritage Academic Programs, and we also uh, were able to uh, put out this past year one more, uh, one more additional um, issue of the World Heritage Capacity Building Newsletter. I would point out that all of these activities were carried out within a pilot capacity building program uh, which had the support of the government of Switzerland. Next slide, please. Uh, in relation to ECROM's own work, uh, I would uh, point out that we also, in conjunction with, uh, with TRAP, which is the Category 2 center in China, and with ECOMOS, um, ECROM carried out a, um, a training course on heritage impact assessments in Lijiang in China. This is particularly important because if you look at the state of conservation reports from last year and also from this year, the committee is beginning to ask for many, many more uh, heritage impact assessments to be carried out um, based on the potential for development in certain World Heritage properties. The idea of this training course is to begin to give capacity to professionals in various countries to be able to carry out that capacity, uh, to be able to carry out those heritage impact assessments. It's uh, expected that we'll be able to do another course uh, next year, uh, also uh, in cooperation with, um, with WITRAP in China, and I'm hoping that we can also carry out other similar courses in, uh, in other regions of the world. Another uh, area that the committee asked us specifically about last year was uh, the idea of creating or updating a training database. ECROM has a training database which allows professionals from around the world to, uh, to be able to search for uh, training courses and other capacity building activities. Uh, and uh, we made a, a special effort over the past year to up that, update that training database and also to post other events which would be of a capacity building nature in our events database uh, and in the classified section of our website. So you'd need to just visit ECROM's website to be able to find those, uh, those materials. Next slide, please. In addition to those things, um, very importantly, uh, we continued work on resource materials over the past year. I'm pleased to, um, to announce that the, um, the Managing Cultural World Heritage um, Resource Manual is in its final phases of uh, um, sort of copy editing and, and layout at this point, and that it should be available very, very shortly on the World Heritage website. So that's uh, another resource manual um, matching the one for natural heritage that came out already uh, in the previous year. And ECROM has also begun to develop a series of case studies um, to deal with management issues at World Heritage sites. Um, the idea would be that we can build a database of these case studies so that people uh, who have similar problems can consult the case studies and see how they've been dealt with in other, in, in, in other World Heritage properties. Next slide, please. Uh, those are at the, na at the international level. At the regional level, there have also been a series of activities going on in the past year. Um, we're basing uh, most of these regional strategies on uh, the results of the periodic reporting. Um, the Africa World Heritage Fund has been uh, very active in, uh, in developing developing capacity building activities, particularly in relation to nominations, which we've already mentioned uh, earlier in this meeting, but also uh, they recently carried out a, a, a training course on disaster risk management. And uh, these are the kinds of activities that uh, were identified within the periodic report as being a priority for, um, for African uh, World Heritage sites. Um, also in Asia, um, WITRAP again is, has been working on a capacity building strategy for, uh, for Asia and the Pacific. A first draft of that strategy has been developed already, and they're now in uh, the process of starting a second um, round of consultation with Asia Pacific state parties. So they are actually requesting me to request all of the um, state parties from Asia and the Pacific to participate in that second round of consultations so that a very strong and, and useful capacity building strategy for the region can be developed. And finally, as you see, um, actually even starting before the results of the periodic reporting, um, the Asia, uh, the Europe, sorry, not Asia, the Europe and uh, 
Europe and North America desk at the World Heritage Center has begun the development of a capacity building strategy specifically for Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe. Uh, and in fact, uh, they will be presenting uh, that in a side event which will take place on the 19th of June during this meeting uh, at 1.15 during the lunch break. So I would encourage people who are interested in capacity building in uh, Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe to attend that uh, side event uh, at lunch on the 19th. Next slide, please. Uh, and finally, and this will be my last slide, um, uh, we are continuing work on the development of the World Heritage Capacity Building Program. We've identified priorities and we've, uh, we've put a, a program of, uh, of activities together. And I'm, I'm happy to report that the Swiss have agreed uh, to provide some additional contributions. The, the pilot program is, 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 is coming to an end right now, actually. But the Swiss uh, government has uh, kindly agreed to um, make some additional contributions to that. And you can see the list of activities that we're um, foreseeing uh, uh, to take place over the, for the rest of this year. We would like to develop a module specifically on management of both cultural and natural heritage together. Um, we are looking at the production of more resource materials. Uh, we are looking to strengthen our network of capacity building institutions. Um, and we are obviously also looking to carry out some more training activities and to continue strengthening our advisory body networks. As I said, using some of the people that we trained in these past uh, training workshops on, on, on mission work. Um, and then my final point would just be that the Swiss contribution is very generous and very useful, but we really need to have support, actually both, both financial and, and in other ways, also human resources, in whatever ways that states parties are, are, are able to support capacity building. Uh, we would like to ask that that support take place either at the international level or also, again, at the regional level. Um, with that, I would conclude my own remarks, and I believe that uh, Mr. Bocardi from the World Heritage Center um, would now like to report on the Category 2 centers, and I also know that ECOMOS has a short comment that it would also like to make at the, at the end of the presentation. So, Mr. Chair, if, it, if uh, we have your permission, I'd like to pass the word to Mr. Bocardi. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Uh, bien sûr, je souhaite maintenant donc, passer la parole à Monsieur Bocardi du Centre Patrimoine Mondial pour nous présenter vraiment le le rapport d'avancement sur le centre des catégories de associés au patrimoine mondial. Vous avez la parole, monsieur. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So you, you heard about um, some of the activities in which the Category 2 centers have been uh, involved, and uh, now I would like to tell you more about the development of the Category 2 centers as a network of institutions. Um, <clears throat> in the first slide, you can see uh, some of the main developments that have occurred since the last session of the committee last year, uh, which relate to the implementation of the recommendations made by the audit conducted uh, in 2010 for all Category 2 centers at UNESCO, which called for a number of improvements in the processes for their establishment, monitoring, and renewal. These included, for example, the mainstreaming of the results-based management approach in uh, Category 2 centers, as well as the possible introduction of a policy, uh, UNESCO-wise, that uh, would require the consultation of the relevant subsidiary bodies within the UNESCO system before a decision is taken on um, conducting a feasibility study on a new proposal. These are proposals that will be examined by the next general conference in uh, November 2013. Um, as regards the activities of the individual Category 2 centers, they are so numerous that we could not include them in detail in the short working document which is in front of you. However, uh, they made uh, a number of, uh, they developed uh, many activities, and these are all included in their individual reports, which can be accessed through the dedicated page on our website. And uh, they show how all these centers, each within its region and the specific thematic interest, are working towards the implementation of the decisions taken by the committee, notably within the context of periodic reports and efforts to build capacities in the regions. Uh, there is also a brochure which is available um, outside of the room which uh, presents uh, some of the um, uh, progress uh, made by the Category 2 Center. It looks like this. It's on the table outside for those who are interested. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the other main element of information which is included in the document uh, 6 is about the third annual coordination meeting of Category 2 Center related to World Heritage 
which was held in uh, March of this year in Oslo, in Norway. It was hosted by the Nordic World Heritage uh, Foundation with the financial support from the Ministry of Environment of Norway, both of which I would like to warmly thank for their uh, contribution. In addition to sharing information and planning um, joint, uh, joint initiatives, the meeting provided an opportunity to build the capacities of the representatives of Category 2 centers in applying the RBM approach. There was, in fact, a, a workshop within the larger meeting conducted by a UNESCO staff from the Bureau of Strategic Planning, which is in charge of RBM at UNESCO. And um, <clears throat> this enabled the Category 2 centers to uh, understand the larger context in which they operate, from the C5 and C4 within UNESCO to the specific policies uh, set by the committee, and also uh, understand how to ensure that uh, the activities that they plan contribute to these uh, objectives and goals. Uh, next slide, please. In this uh, picture, you can see the beautiful building where the meeting uh, took place. It's the recently built Astrup Fernley Museum by the renowned architect Renzo Piano in Oslo on the port side. Um, next slide, please. This is my last uh, slide. Um, it shows uh, some of the uh, outcomes of this uh, third coordination meeting. Uh, a number of follow-up actions were agreed, uh, which are listed in the final report, which is also accessible uh, uh, through our web um, page dedicated to Category 2 centers. Among uh, the most important outcomes is the decision taken by all the Category 2 centers uh, related to World Heritage to undertake a review of their individual uh, strategies and work plan to uh, mainstream the RBM approach and to present at their next meeting in 2014 a draft of this revised uh, strategies and work plan. Uh, also of great potential is uh, the intention expressed by all the Category 2 centers to strengthen their collaboration and synergies uh, with other regional actors, uh, such as UNESCO chairs or ECOMOS national committees, or also at the thematic level with international partners such as ICROM and IUCN. Um, this Category 2 centers have also agreed on a number of joint activities also listed in the mentioned report and briefly referred to in the working document. Uh, in fact, I would like to uh, just inform you that an informal meeting of Category 2 centers uh, will take place uh, during this session on 20th June uh, during the lunch break. This is reserved for Category 2 Center representatives, but uh, if anyone, any uh, state party is interested in uh, making contact with them, uh, starting from 2 o'clock, it would be possible to, to meet them. And then, of course, uh, during the rest of the session, this will be um, in room 1 or 2 on the fourth floor. Uh, there is a single draft decision encompassing both the capacity building and the uh, Category 2 Center's uh, uh, parts of this uh, working document, which is in page 5 in both English and French version. Um, and that would be all. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you for your uh, report. And... Um, So now I would like to uh, pass to the... No interpretation again. No interpretation. Uh, please, dear colleagues of the committee, do you have interpretation? Is working now? Is it okay? Is it working for Russian? Not yet? Russian is not working. Spanish is okay? Arabic is okay? Arabic, it's okay, you're not working, not working either. So I try to verify it again. Is it okay now? Still not working Russian.
So let's try again to verify. So could please the interpreters let us know if this is working. Spanish, okay. English, okay. French, Arabic, Arabic. No Arabic. Russian. Russian not working, not Arabic. So let's try again. Please, our colleagues of the interpretation. Is it working for the Arabic and Russian? No. Not working. Still not working. So let's stay one minute. Why was all this problem?
Arabic is okay? No, it's not working. None of them. So, with the permission maybe of the dear colleagues, uh, of, uh, may I resume the meeting in uh, English, French, why we uh, solve this technical problem, if you are okay with this. So, I now invite you to uh, keep working in, in our businesses. So, So, are the interpreters listening to me? So apparently, they are not. Do you hear me or not? Yes, it's okay. Spanish is So, dear colleagues, while we wait for the, uh, this problem to get solved, I propose you a 10 minutes break. I'm so sorry, but I think it's the best way. So, we will resume in 10 minutes, please. Thank you. So oh, I will So if the colleagues that are outside the room they can they can come back. Apparently we have the quorum to keep going in our businesses. So uh, now is it okay now for Russian? Is it okay for Arabic as well? Spanish, English, French? Is everything working now? Okay. So, dear colleagues, we are going to proceed now. Um, donc, nous venons de uh, avoir les présentations de, de, de les représentants de l'ICROM, ainsi que M. Bocardi, à propos de, du point 6 de l'ordre du jour. Donc, chers collègues, je... Vous invite maintenant à adopter le projet de décision 37 comme 6 qui se trouve au point 3 du document qui vient de vous être présenté. Donc, euh, si vous avez des commentaires sur ce point, je vous en prie. Donc, je vois la Suisse. Merci, l'ambassadeur. Vous avez la parole. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. This gives new meaning to the, the words uh, breaking the silence procedure. Euh, Monsieur le Président, je, loin de moi l'idée de m'opposer à l'adoption de ce document, mais j'aurais voulu, à la suite des paroles fortes du représentant de l'ICROM, euh, ajouter ma voix également à ce qui euh, concerne ce point à l'ordre du jour. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier les organisations consultatives pour la qualité du travail fourni pendant les trois dernières années dans le cadre de la stratégie du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités. Mais je veux souligner que ces remerciements ne sont pas des remerciements convenus. Ils sont bien plus motivés par la, la reconnaissance du travail accompli euh, dans la rigueur et le respect des buts et l'esprit de la Convention. Vous savez, cela a été dit, euh, un des résultats les plus marquants de ces travaux est la formation d'un grand nombre de professionnels provenant de 
dizaines de pays de la plupart des régions du monde. Eh bien, à partir de cette année, le nouveau programme du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités viendra donner une suite aux travaux accomplis jusqu'à présent en diversifiant et en intensifiant les activités. Or, il est fondamental que ce programme atteigne une masse critique de financement pour pouvoir fonctionner, car le renforcement de capacité est en fait la base de l'amélioration générale de la qualité de la gestion des biens et de la crédibilité de la liste du patrimoine mondial. Vous savez que mon gouvernement a soutenu euh, l'ensemble de ces efforts et cela ne vous étonnera pas, je ne peux que confirmer que naturellement nous allons continuer à soutenir ce programme, mais nous lançons un appel à d'autres États partis pour qu'ils viennent également l'appuyer. Et puis, même si en raison des difficultés de transmission, un certain nombre de délégués ne sont plus dans la salle. Je prends plaisir à vous dire que, pour mieux connaître le programme de renforcement de capacité, la délégation suisse vous invite à une réception ce jeudi 21, euh, à partir de 19h, dans les salles 1 et 2 du quatrième étage. Ce sera l'occasion de mieux encore expliquer « what is at stake ». Merci. Merci à vous, monsieur l'ambassadeur. Euh, tout à fait. On prend une bonne note de votre invitation à l'événement qui se tiendra. Et je vous prie à la, au secrétariat de, de nous rappeler après de ça. Donc, euh, je vois s'il y a des autres membres du comité qui souhaitent intervenir. Je vois la Colombie. Colombie, tiene la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La delegación de Colombia aplaude todas las actividades que en solo año y medio de su instauración ha venido desarrollando la estrategia de construcción de capacidades en patrimonio mundial a través de los diferentes talleres subregionales y de otras medidas de formación, así como el interés en fortalecer el programa a través de la búsqueda de fondos para su financiación. Por consiguiente, acogemos el proyecto de decisión con el ánimo de seguir respaldando el avance a los centros de categoría 2 de patrimonio mundial y su impacto positivo en la construcción de capacidades locales para la comprensión de la convención misma y el manejo de los sitios de patrimonio mundial. Muchas gracias al representante de Colombia. Si hay otros miembros del comité que quisieran intervenir, si no fuera así, entonces... Quisiera dar la palabra a los observadores. Veo en la lista Brasil. Señor distinguido delegado de Brasil, tiene la palabra. El micrófono no funciona, entonces, Estonia, muchas gracias. Por... Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to my Estonian delegate uh, colleague for allowing me to to speak from the from their desk, um, Mr. Che uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the outset, allow us to congratulate the uh, the contribution of Switzerland for the uh, World Heritage Capacity Building Strategy uh, for its continued contribution, and we uh, we look forward to uh, strengthen strengthen uh, the, this program under their. Um, uh, support. Also, we would to thank the government of, uh, of Norway for hosting the, the last uh, Category 2 meeting in Oslo. And on that uh, meeting, it was agreed that next year this coordination meeting will take place in Brazil under the auspices of the Lucio Costa Center for uh, Regional Center for Heritage Management and so we we're looking forward to to uh, further work on the on a strategic action plan for implementing the uh, capacity building strategy through the valuable work uh, of the category two centers. Thank you. Gracias a usted, señor delegado de Brasil, por sus importantes comentarios. Eh, igualmente fui informado que el eh, relator ha recibido eh, una proposición de enmienda, así que entonces le doy la palabra al relator para que nos presente el texto. Gracias.
Je voudrais vous informer qu'on a reçu un amendement de la délégation de Mali et c'est au paragraphe 6. Je vais vous lire le paragraphe 6. Reconnaît le rôle très important que jouent les centres de catégorie 2 et les centres de renforcement des capacités du patrimoine mondial dans la mise en œuvre de la stratégie du patrimoine mondial pour le renforcement des capacités VHCBS et leur potentiel à contribuer davantage au renforcement des capacités en général. Merci. Muchas gracias, señora relatora. Invito entonces a los miembros del comité si tuvieran comentarios sobre esta propuesta de enmienda. Si no fuera el caso, entonces pasaríamos a adoptar esta contribución de la delegación de Mali sobre el texto. No veo entonces comentarios al respecto. Entonces, distinguidos colegas, eh, procedemos entonces a la adopción del proyecto de decisión 37,6, eh, perdón, tal como ha sido eh, enmendado. Entonces, se adopta. Muchas gracias, distinguidos colegas. Veo que hemos avanzado bastante eh, bien durante el día de hoy, así que estamos cumpliendo eh, bastante bien con el orden del día y con la agenda propuesta. Eh, los invito ahora a que examinemos el punto 7C de nuestro orden del día. Paso al francés. Nos venimos ahora al examen del documento WHC 1337.7C qui concerne la réflexion sur l'évolution de l'état de conservation et qui présente les progrès accomplis et puis notre dernière session dans la création du système d'information en ligne sur l'état de conservation. Je vais donc donner maintenant la parole à Mme Rosler, directeur adjoint du Centre de patrimoine mondial, qui va nous présenter ces documents. Donc, Mme Rosler, vous avez la parole. Muchas gracias, señor el presidente. Um, I uh, would like to recall that uh, at the last session of the committee in St. Petersburg in 2012, uh, we presented in response to decision 35.7c uh, quite an ambitious project uh, aiming at developing an online information system on the state of conservation. And my colleagues just move on with the slides, please, and which had received the uh, support of the Flemish government. The SOC information system is now available for all stakeholders of the convention, the state party site managers, uh, uh, advisory bodies, researchers, students, etc. It proposes quite a comprehensive advanced search uh, function with over a hundred options, which you can do by region, by state party, by property, per category of site, years, period, theme, or types of threats and keywords. In addition to the obvious uh, purpose in terms of uh, monitoring information, this SOC system contributes to the institutional memory of the convention and brings to one single page all statutory information available on the state of conservation of specific World Heritage properties. Previously, this wealth of information was disseminated through a number of different documents and websites and was quite difficult to retrieve. This system is now available online on the World Heritage Center's webpage at the web address displayed on the screens. As you can see um, on the screens, alongside a brief introduction, the homepage of the information system presents also graphic information and statistics. It also proposes numerous shortcuts uh, to the data through direct links. Soon more features will be available on these web pages, um, including maps. This project, which uh, I'm carrying out with Mr. Veillon, who is just behind me, um, is ongoing uh, in the data um, integration phase for all reports examined by the committee, and we hope to complete it by September 2013. 
As we are speaking today, we have integrated over 1,850 SOC reports um, of 395 properties located in 123 state parties. We have also already identified a number of areas to improve this SOC information system and to strengthen its visibility and impact, such as the inclusion of explanatory notes, the summary of discussions, which would concern 1,600 reports, uh, periodic reports uh, linking these processes as previously was requested by the committee uh, to link more uh, state of conservation and periodic reporting. Uh, however, data provided by state parties through the periodic reports is not public. You, you know the section two of the periodic reports provided by the state parties on the specific sites. So that would require a specific decision um, by the committee um, to make this uh, available. And this could be done perhaps in the next uh, cycle of periodic reporting when we have the reflection uh, phase. Uh, concerning uh, a wider information uh, and knowledge management initiative, Mr. Rao already presented in document 5A our links to the other multilateral environmental agreements. I think this is important because they have an, um, a separate information portal on the MEARS, InfoMEA, which brings together uh, 17 uh, multilateral environmental agreements, including the World Heritage Convention and uh, that we would like in the future maybe also link to the UNESCO's Man and Biosphere Program, Geoparks, Council of Europe, uh, European Heritage Label, etc. And there are also other uh, projects underway to which we could link, like uh, from IUCN on the Conservation Outlook. Um, finally, Mr. Chair and uh, dear committee members, uh, I'm very pleased to inform you that since this information system was made public on the 5th December last year, we had nearly 70,000 pages which have been reviewed, maybe by you, maybe by the general public. Um, and in addition, pages of this information system are now also found in an increasing number of articles and web pages as a uh, reference. I think these results are very encouraging for the future of this information system, and we really count on the support of all state parties to carry on with the proposed improvements I mentioned earlier on. The decision is in document 7C on page 6. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup, Madame Rosler, pour votre complet rapport. Donc, chers collègues, nous avons maintenant examiné le projet de décision 37 comme c'est qui figure au point 5 du document qui est devant vous. Donc, je vous invite maintenant à présenter vos commentaires, si c'est le cas. La parole est à vous. Je vois la France. Madame, vous aurez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous proposons un amendement pour cette, ce projet qui concerne le paragraphe 5. Voilà, avec la formulation « encourage les États partis à rendre public » les rapports présentés sur l'état de conservation des biens du patrimoine mondial afin de faciliter leur consultation par toutes les parties prenantes et contribuer à une amélioration de la transparence du processus de suivi réactif et, dans ce cas, demande au centre du patrimoine mondial de les rendre accessibles au public sur le site internet du système d'information sur l'état de conservation. En effet, s'il est souhaitable de rendre public les états de conservation, en revanche, une obligation peut être plus un obstacle qu'une solution. En effet, cette obligation pourrait avoir pour conséquence de restreindre les informations qui sont communiqués au centre du patrimoine mondial. De plus, certaines informations 
selon la législation des États membres, ne peuvent être rendus publics. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, Madame, pour vos commentaires. Je vois la Serbie. Serbie, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since I take floor for the first time, I avail myself of the opportunity to thank the Cambodian government for preparing of this event and uh, for the hospitality extended to the participants of the 37th session. Uh, my thanks also go to the Secretariat for fine quality of the documents prepared for the session. Uh, we have read with interest the paper on reflection on trends of the state conservation. In this regard, I would like to express our thanks to Flemish government for its support for establishing on the line a state of conservation information of world heritage properties that would, as stressed in paper, contribute to international memory of the World Heritage Convention. We also find very important that the state of conservation system project aims at developing comprehensive searchable database on the state of conservation based on the reports since 1979. Uh, it is our opinion that the project, when completed, will contribute uh, to synergy between different international instruments like Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, UN Convention on Biodiversity, particularly Aichi targets, Geoparks, Council of Europe Roots Program. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Merci à vous, madame, pour vos commentaires. Je vois l'Estonie. Estonie, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have an overall comment also. Estonia warmly welcomes the initiative to create the SOC database as something that we have really dreamed of. We consider it a very helpful instrument for decision making, a credible tool for research, and a big step in improving transparency. We hope that this will be further developed, and we understand that the structuring of diverse problems is a huge task. Just as a suggestion, we recommend to add a topic of high-rise buildings to the section of threats. Uh, but we also support uh, the idea to add state party reports to the database, and this brings us also to the problems. We would like to highlight the importance of state of conservation reports uh, made by states. Based on our experience and as a committee member and also as a reporting uh, state party and recalling our previous discussions on item 5C and site-specific dialogue, we would like to stress that the process of reporting is a very valuable tool and advantage for the state parties themselves to involve local community in explaining and taking care for the understanding of outstanding universal value and to improve the methods and skills. State party report is a basis for monitoring the threats and creating dialogue with the advisory bodies. We are happy to note that year after year the number of missing reports is decreasing. Still, according to our statistics, we miss 12% that means 12 reports out of 102 sites discussed under Section 7B. Among them, six from the member countries of the, uh, countries of the committee. We would like to remind all state parties that this is not only an obligation of the state party to ease our work, but also an important tool of cooperation on both local and global levels. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Senegal. Now I see Senegal, and after Senegal, uh, Le Cambodge. Donc, uh, d'abord, le Senegal. Vous avez la parole, Monsieur. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. Uh, nous félicitons l'organisation pour uh, ce travail uh, tout à fait intéressant et les projections qui sont faites. Mais nous voudrions appuyer très fortement. Euh, l'amendement fait par la France.
parce que je pense que les organisations consultatives, de toute façon, ont accès à tous ces documents. Par contre, les documents peuvent contenir, à mon avis, des informations qui ne peuvent pas être communiquées. On sait qu'il y a des sites qui posent des problèmes entre États. Il y a des sites qui sont objets de conflits. Et sur ces questions-là, je pense que nous ne devrons pas mettre de l'huile sur le feu. Il faut examiner les choses au cas par cas et encourager simplement les États à le faire si elles pensent que la diffusion est sans danger. Merci. Merci à vous, monsieur. Et donc, je passe maintenant la parole au distingué délégué de Cambodge. Merci à vous avez la parole. Merci, monsieur le Président. Le Cambodge prend la parole pour la première fois et sur le dernier point de l'ordre du jour. Et tient à remercier le Centre du patrimoine mondial, les organes consultatifs et le gouvernement flamand à qui a apporté son soutien sur ce projet. Ce système d'information sur l'état de conservation des biens du patrimoine mondial depuis 1900 79 est un outil extrêmement extraordinaire contribuant à la mémoire institutionnelle de la Convention du patrimoine mondial. C'est également un outil de suivi de l'état de conservation des biens en identifiant les différents facteurs affectant ces biens, en permettant d'avoir une meilleure gestion des connaissances et en conduisant à une décision cohérente. De grands pas ont, ont, ont été faits, Monsieur le Président. Le Cambodge par la même occasion, soutient l'amendement de la France. Merci beaucoup, M. le Président. Merci beaucoup, M. pour vos commentaires. Donc, euh, y a-t-il des autres commentaires de certains membres du comité Si ce n'est pas le cas, j'aimerais bien passer la parole à Mme Rosler pour répondre aux commentaires de la délégation d'Estonie. Donc, Madame Rosler, s'il vous plaît. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Just to answer the question from Estonia on high-rise buildings, the threats we have identified in the tool are exactly the same as the threats in the periodic reporting questionnaire for Section 2, so that we enable the system to work on both in the, in the future. So uh, this was a specific request from the committee uh, to move closer um, uh, reactive monitoring and periodic reporting. So you would have to look under housing issues if you would like to look uh, for high-rise buildings, and then you find it. And I would like to thank all delegates for their comments on, uh, on this project. Uh, they are very much welcome, and we take them into account. Uh, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Madame Rosler, pour vos réponses. Donc, y a-t-il des autres commentaires sur ce point Donc, si ce n'est pas le cas, donc, on revient au projet de décision sur le texte et particulièrement sur la proposition de la France. Si nous sommes tous d'accord avec cette proposition, nous pouvons donc euh, amender le texte et passer à l'approbation du même si c'est le cas donc euh, je ne vois pas des objections donc le projet de décision 37.37.7c est donc adopté tel qu'amendé merci beaucoup So, dear colleagues, if we take a look on the agenda, we have already discussed all the items that were uh, uh, proposed for today. So, with your permission, uh, we can continue with a document, uh, with the next document in our agenda, which is document 7A. Uh, don't, uh, so, sorry. So, as you know, Uh, and according to paragraph 190 of the operational guidelines, the committee shall review annually 
the state of conservation of properties on the list of World Heritage in danger. I, will, I would like to now uh, give the floor to the director of the World Heritage Center to introduce this item. So, Mr. Rao, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the three documents, uh, the working documents uh, before you are uh, documents 37, com 7A, 7A add, and 7A add 2. Uh, these uh, three documents contain the state of conservation of all the 38 uh, sites which are on the World Heritage in danger, out of which uh, 17 are natural properties and 21 are cultural properties. Uh, you will recall, uh, the committee will recall that at the 35th session, uh, it had decided to default to a two-year cycle for the discussion of properties listed in the World Heritage in Danger, except for cases of utmost urgency. And in response uh, to document uh, 37.com-inf-7, some committee members have requested that a number of uh, state of conservation reports which had originally not been proposed for discussion should be op opened for discussion and these have now been included in your document INF 7 REV. So the document seven, INF 7 REV contains the list of all the state of conservation reports which you have considered necessary to discuss. Now, once we review uh, the relevant agenda items and before giving the floor to the secretariat and advisory bodies, the relevant committee members who have requested that these uh, documents and sites be open for discussion will be requested to explain the reasons why they have asked a certain site to be open for mm -hmm. discussion. Uh, so that we don't have to make a detailed presentation on each of these sites, we will merely request the committee members to indicate why you have asked for these uh, sites to be open for discussion, and on that basis, the secretariat and the advisory bodies will make their presentation. The order of presentation of these sites uh, will be natural sites, followed by mixed sites, and then cultural sites. And the order of presentation will be Asia and the Pacific, followed by Europe and North America, Latin America and the Caribbean, Africa and the Arab states. I also wish to draw your attention to the fact that 45% of the requested states parties' state of conservation reports were received by the World Heritage Center after the statutory deadline of 1st February making the timely submission of working documents very difficult. That is why the date of 1st February is uh, provided for you to submit your state of conservation reports, but 45% of the reports were received after this date. And that is why we have to produce ad documents and uh, distribute them beyond the statutory deadline which is six weeks before the opening of the session. I would also like to, at this point, recall the committee's rules of procedure, which you may want to apply on this particular agenda items. The particular rules of procedure that I wish to highlight are rules of procedure 22.5, 22.6, 22.7. These three uh, pertain to the order in which the chairperson shall uh, put the committee's questions to the state party concerned uh, relating to clarifications uh, raised by the committee members on the state of conservation of the particular site. Rule 22.6 calls for committee members not to speak to the World Heritage uh, properties in their own territories except when the chairperson so invites them to do so and not to advocate in, particular, uh, in favor of a particular proposal. The same applies to other states' parties also who are not members of the committee and the rule requests them not to speak to advocate uh, on the state of conservation of uh, a particular property. Lastly, Mr. Chairperson, I would also like to remind the committee members about decision 35 com 12 e 
which the committee adopted at 35th session in 2011 and which requests states parties to refrain from providing additional informa information regarding the state of conservation issues after the deadline indicated in the operational guidelines. And the reason why this uh, decision was adopted by the committee is because then it becomes very difficult for the advisory bodies to analyze and assess the information that is provided at the last minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rao, for your presentation. So now we are ready to start the examination of the state of conservation reports of properties inscribed on the, world, uh, on the list of World Heritage in danger. Uh, I'll now, I now invite the director of the, uh, the representative of the World Heritage Center, Mr. Mark Patry, to inform us about the state of conservation reports of natural properties of the Asia Pacific and, and European and North and North America regions as none of them has been requested for discussion. So, Mr. Patry, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Yes, please allow me to uh, just note the names of those two uh, World Heritage properties in these two regions which uh, are, are suggested for adoption without discussion. The first in uh, Asia Pacific is the Tropical Rainforest Heritage of Sumatra. The following in Europe, North America, uh, is the Everglades National Park. So these are recommended for adoption without discussion. I'll continue with the following uh, state of conservation report uh, on Belize Barrier Reef Reserve System in Belize. The draft decision is on page 46 in document 7A ad in English and uh, in document 7A ad page 48 in French. The World Heritage Committee requested an IUCN reactive monitoring mission to this property at its last meeting. The mission took place in February of this year. One of the main issues remaining to be resolved is the ongoing consideration by the State Party of development proposals on small mangrove islands within the property. As has been noted before, these islands are the backbone for many features of the property's OUV. Their state of conservation is directly linked to the property's state of conservation. IUCN, having been to the uh, property recently, will continue with further comments on the results of the mission. Thank you. Next slide, please. So with your uh, permission, Chair, um, from IUCN, based, we note based on the mission that there has been some progress achieved in a number of the corrective measures. However, several critical issues have not been resolved and additional efforts are going to be required in order to enable removal of the property from the list of World Heritage in danger. The, the updated list of corrective measures was developed during the reactive monitoring mission and it's presented in the draft decision and it was considered during the mission that more, t more time is required to draft the desired state of conservation for the removal of the property from the list of World Heritage in danger and that should also follow uh, the agreement of the um, soon to be submitted retrospective statement of outstanding universal value. Uh, and so that should come forward to the 38th session of the committee in 2014. Um, following the reactive monitoring mission, the State Party has also informed IUCN of its intention to develop a new exploration and exploitation policy which would ensure that the conservation objectives for this World Heritage Site are not compromised. The State Party also additionally requested IUCN's advice on how to proceed with that matter. And then shortly after that, in April 2013, we noted reports that the Supreme Court of Belize had declared all offshore oil drilling contracts void. IUCN considers it would be nevertheless beneficial for the State Party to develop a policy for hydrocarbons to ensure the long-term protection of the property. Um, so, in summary, we recommend the retention of this property on the list of World Heritage in Danger, but we're pleased to note some advances on a number of the issues and also a strong dialogue on the process that's needed to move to the eventual removal from the list in danger. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much to the representative of the IUCN and the World Heritage Center as well. So, um, so now uh, I turn to member states to present their comments on uh, this document. Uh, so the floor is yours. So 
So if we have no comments on this, we can proceed to adopt this decision. So draft decision 37.7816 is now adopted. So, Mr. Patry, now you have the floor to present the next property uh, for examination. Thank you. The other two properties in the Latin American and the Caribbean region are not, rec not recommended for discussion and, uh, in fact, recommended for adoption without it. So, these are Los Catillos National Park in Colombia and Rio Platano Bias Reserve in Honduras. So if uh, there are no comments on this, we can proceed to the adoption of these draft decisions. So decisions are adopted. So I now invite Mr. Guy de Bonnet from the World Heritage Center to present the reports on the state of concern in the Afri Africa region and open for discussion. So, sir, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. We start a review of the sites in Africa with the Manovo Gunda St. Flores National Park in the Central African Republic. The World Heritage Center and IUCN note that the situation in this property remains extremely critical. They recall that almost all flexive species and large mammals have disappeared from the property due to poaching and that based on the results of the 2010 inventory, IUCN has concluded that the outstanding universal value of the site has been lost. The World Heritage Center and IUCN consider that there still remains a very fragile potential for regeneration of this outstanding universal value based on the relict mammal populations in the hunting areas bordering the property. But this potential could be lost rapidly as poaching also continues to impact these areas. In addition, the World Heritage Center and IUCN note that a new political crisis is affecting the country since the end of March when the government in place was overthrown. No information has been received on the situation in Northern CER, nor on the impact of the crisis on the conservation activities in the site. However, we were informed that the tourism hunting companies, which were operating in the blocks around the sites, have suspended their activities, and so poaching pressure in these areas is likely to also be on the increase. As a result of the political crisis, the expert meeting which was planned to develop an emergency action plan again had to be postponed. It is proposed that if it's not possible to organize this meeting in the Central African Republic as a result of the political situation, it might be envis envisaged to organize it in a neighboring country. This workshop should also assess if it's still feasible to restore the outstanding universal value in view of the security conditions. The World Heritage Center and IUCN consider that if restoration cannot be started soon and the trends in the loss of wildlife in Northern CER are not reversed quickly, the World Heritage Committee will have to consider in the near future the possible removal of the property from the World Heritage List. They consider that in the meantime, the, the site should be maintained on the list of World Heritage in danger and subject to reinforced monitoring. IUCN has no, inf no further uh, intervention on this site and the draft decision 36.7A1 can be found at page 7 of the English version of the working document 7A and page 6 in the French version. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Libonet, for your presentation. So now I turn to the committee members to present their comments, if is the case. I can see Estonia, so please proceed. Thank you for the floor. Uh, we would like to make a comment of uh, general nature about uh, world heritage properties of Africa. 
both uh, in the danger list like this one and the state of conservation reports generally. Uh, right now, there seem to be three main critical issues that are common to these. Uh, and these are, first, security situations. Secondly, increasing poaching, especially elephants and rhinos. And thirdly, increasing exploration and exploitation of natural resources. What we want to emphasize is that um, these issues are tightly to connected to each other. And as concerns the second and third issue, we would also like to underline that these are not only the problems of the state parties in question, but the problems of the world and the international community. The fact is that the reason for these problems comes mainly uh, outside of Africa. It is the international market and economy that causes them, and therefore we must feel responsible for it. This is something that uh, we should bear in mind uh, all the time when looking uh, uh, through all the decisions concerning problematic African World Heritage sites. So when speaking about uh, reducing poaching or exploitation or exploitation of natural resources, we must also think how all the state parties to the convention could take all the possible measures for doing it in their, in their countries. And when speaking about international cooperation in this field, one very concrete uh, measure is uh, strengthening uh, the control uh, for implementing CITES Convention, for example. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your comments. Is there any further comments on this item? Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Moi, je rejoins la position de l'Estonie. Et pour être plus concret, je voudrais parler des de cas de, de biens culturels qui sont dans des, 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 des territoires en période de conflit. Conflit pour lesquels l'État parti n'est même pas responsable. C'est des éléments qui viennent de l'extérieur et qui viennent envahir et détruire notre patrimoine. Je sais que l'État parti du Mali a la responsabilité de protéger ces sites, d'accord Mais il y a quand même un certain nombre de, forces, de cas de force majeure il faut, auquel il faudrait vraiment réfléchir en cas de destruction du patrimoine. L'État parti n'est pas le seul responsable en période de conflit, surtout des conflits qui viennent de facteurs exogènes, même pas de facteurs endogènes. Je vous remercie. Merci à vous, monsieur. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires sur ce point S'il n'y a pas, donc, euh, on prend note des commentaires euh, qui ont été soulignés. Et bien sûr, on passe maintenant à l'adoption du projet de décision. Donc, euh, on, euh, on procède euh, à dire que le euh, draft decision 37.7a1 is now adopted. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Debonet, you have the floor again to present uh, the next item, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next site is the Comoe National Park in Côte d'Ivoire. As requested by the committee at its previous session, an IUCN monitoring mission visited this property in January 2013. And IUCN will therefore briefly exp explain the conclusions of this mission. Okay, Chair, with your permission, um, the IUCN mission to the property confirmed that its outstanding universal value is significantly degraded. The decline in populations of key species such as elephant and chimpanzee are of particular concern, and lion appears to have altogether disappeared from the property. IUCN considers that an inventory of the populations of key species should be undertaken as soon as possible to serve as a baseline for monitoring the restoration of these species populations. Such an inventory will be crucial to define the population growths that should be achieved and the timeline for achieving them as part of the indicators of the desired state of conservation for the removal of the property from the list of world heritage in danger. IUCN therefore recommends that the committee note the draft desired state of conservation as developed during the mission with the understanding that the indicators on values will be further defined when data becomes available. 
In the meantime, IUCN and the World Heritage Center recommend that the committee retain the property on the list of World Heritage in danger. Thank you, Chair. The draft decision 36.7A1 can be found at page 5 of the English version of the working document 7A ad and uh, page 5 also of the French version. Thank you very much for your presentation. So now I invite the committee members to present their comments. If not, we can proceed to the adoption of draft decision 37.7A2. So it is adopted. Mr. De Bonnet, please proceed with the next property. Thank you. The next property is the Mount Nimba Strict Nature Reserve, which is a transboundary property between Côte d'Ivoire and Guinea. A joint World Heritage Center IUCN reactive monitoring mission visited this property from the 25th of February to the 5th of March. The mission concluded that the outstanding universal value which motivated the inscription of the property is still present but remains threatened by increasing pressures, notably uncontrolled fires, poaching, destructing, destruction of habitat in the periphery of the property and the extension of agricultural and forestry operations on the boundary and sometimes inside the property. The mission was informed that in addition to the iron mining concession inside the mining enclave which was previously excluded from the property, the state party attributed since the previous mission two new mining permits, exploration permits, one for iron mining on its eastern boundary and one for nickel and cobalt which is partially overlapping with the property. The World Heritage Center and IUCN are concerned about the cumulative impacts of these different mining activities, which they consider could constitute a threat to the outstanding universal value of the property. These impacts should be assessed through the different environmental impact assessments which are currently being undertaken. It is, however, crucial for the State Party to ensure that these assessments look specifically also at the cumulative impacts of the different projects, including the indirect impacts due to the profound socio-economic changes these projects could generate. The mission therefore provided specific recommendations on the implementation of these impact assessments. The mission also noted, noticed the progress accomplished in the implementation of some of the corrective measures by the two state parties, but considered that an important effort is still necessary to achieve the restoration of the integrity of the property and its long-term conservation. The World Heritage Center and IUCN recommend that the re committee retain the property on the list of World Heritage in danger and adopt the revised corrective measures proposed by the mission and contained in the draft decision. In the absence of data on the current state of the biological values of the property, the mission was unable to define the desired state of conservation for removal of the property from the list of World Heritage in danger. And therefore, these value indicators should be defined as soon as an operational system for ecological monitoring of the property has been established. IUCN has no further intervention on this property, and the draft decision 36.7A3 can be found at page 10 of the English version of the working document 7A ed, and page, also page 10 on the French version. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So now the floor is to the committee members to present their comments, if the case. I see none. So we can proceed to adopt the draft decision 37.7A3. So it is adopted. Mr. De Bonnet, please. Thank you. We now move to the properties in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And we will start this review with the report on the general situation of the properties in DRC, which is item 9 in your working document, 7A ad, on page 21 in the English and the French versions. Since the 36th session of the World Heritage Committee, the security situation in eastern DRC has gradually deteriorated further. Currently, only Salonga National Park is not affected by this upsurge of violence as it is not located in the east, which is the zone of armed conflict. 
linked to the insecurity, there is a clear resurgence of commercial poaching of elephants for ivory, which is decimating the elephant populations in the five properties. In response to the decision of the previous session, 36.7A36, the Protected Area Agency, ICCN, organized a meeting to assess the implementation of the commitments made by the, at the Kinshasa Declaration as well as the three-year strategic action plan, which was adopted at the high-level meeting in January 2011. The meeting concluded that only about 30% of the action plan had been implemented so far due to the political and security situation in the country. However, the state party established the interministerial committee under the supervision of the Ministry for Natural Resources and Tourism, which was requested by the committee, to ensure the implementation of the action plan. In addition, the Mining Cadaster and the Protected Area Authority established a framework agreement to address the issues related to the attribution by the Mining Cadaster of mining concessions which overlap with several properties. Concerning oil exploration, the World Heritage Center and IUCN note that the state par party has so far taken no action to cancel the oil exploration concessions granted in Virunga National Park and has not provided the information requested by the committee in respect to the oil exploration blocks which have been established in the central basin, some of which overlap with the Salonga National Park, another site. In addition, the World Heritage Center and IUCN have recently informed information, uh, received information on a new project for a hydrocarbons code, which is currently before the parliament uh, in Kinshasa, and which would allow oil exploitation when it concerns public interest, also in protected areas, including in World Heritage properties. To this end, in April 2013, the World Heritage Center wrote a letter to the Minister of Environment to request him to ensure that the new code will ensure that the protection status of World Heritage Sites is guaranteed. The World Heritage Center and IUCN recommend that the committee express its deep concern about this proposed uh, legislation. Mr. Chair, IUCN also has a comment to make on this uh, 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 property. Thanks, Chair. Um, so IUCN would firstly note the importance of support to the Democratic Republic of Congo on all of the issues that have been identified uh, across all five of the natural world heritage sites that are currently included on the list of world heritage in danger. Amongst those issues, IUCN is seriously concerned about the resurgence of commercial ivory poaching. And we note that the data that was presented to the last conference of the parties of the CITES Convention, that's the Convention on Illegal Trade in Endangered Species, which was held in Bangkok in March of, this year, of uh, 2013 this year, shows that in 2011, 90% of the elephant mortality in the five World Heritage properties of the DRC was related to poaching. And IUCN notes that the problem of elephant poaching and this current resurgence of it is affecting many of the natural world heritage properties in Africa more widely, and that matter will be raised uh, under item 7B. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, sorry, the draft decision 36.7A9 uh, can be found at page 22 of the English version of the working document and 7, of 7A add. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the French is, uh, sorry, page 23 of the French version of uh, 7A add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for the information. So now I turn again to committee members to uh, present their comments on this draft decision. I see none. So uh, then draft decision 37.7A9 is adopted. Please, Mr. Deponier, proceed with the next property. The first site we will discuss is the Virunga National Park of the DRC sites. Of the five sites, Virunga is probably most affected by the security problems which have been impacting Eastern DRC since April 2012. The property has been the battlefield between the Congolese army and different rebel groups, no, notably the rebels from the armed group M23. In addition, other militia groups are also occupying some areas in the park and its periphery. This situation has made the work of the management authority of the park extremely difficult. And since the previous session, again, two, parks, two guards of the park management agency, ICCN, were killed during the two attacks in the park. 
In spite of this difficult situation, the park authority is maintaining its teams on the ground to try to limit the impacts of the fighting on the property. Since December 2012, park staff is again patrolling the gorilla sector, which is in, hands, in the hands of the M23 rebels. However, rangers have difficulty in accessing certain parts of the park, which are under control of other armed groups. At the end of March of 2013, the UN Security Council decided to deploy a new 3,000-strong intervention brigade as part of the MONUSCO peacekeeping mission in order to fight the armed groups in the east. As of September 2013, these troops will deploy in the region, including in the park, and it is feared that this could lead to renewed fighting in and around the park. UNESCO recently set up a meeting between the MONUSCO commander in Goma, the regional capital, and the chief warden of the park in order to establish direct communication between them in an effort to limit the impacts of this possible fighting on the site. Also, the oil exploration activities in the property by the company Soko have been hampered as a result of the security issues. And according to the information we received, the campaign for the gathering of aeromagnetic and aerogravimetic data has not yet started. With regards to the appeal of the committee to Total and Soko to su subscribe to the commitment not to undertake any mining or oil exploration or explo exploitations within the boundaries of World Heritage properties, Soko responded in December 2012 that its exploration activities in the park were authorized by the Congolese government. To date, the World Heritage Center has not yet received a response from Total. In view of the security situation and the pursuit of the petroleum exploration, the World Heritage Center and IUCN recommend maintaining the property on the list of World Heritage in danger and to continue the application of the reinforced monitoring mechanism. IUCN also has some comments on this property. Thank you. So IUCN would draw attention to the previously mentioned proposed hydrocarbon code, which would make it possible for oil explo exploitation to proceed within the park, and this con constitutes a significant threat to the integrity of the park. In addition, the relevant minister responsible for environment, nature, conservation and tourism in, in a press release uh, has indicated that the government could consider degazetting, in other words, removing protection from part of the park for oil exploitation if oil reserves were confirmed. ASN is deeply concerned that the oil companies which are already exploring for oil inside the property are not operating at the highest international standards nor uh, respecting the requests that this committee has made uh, in that regard. And we therefore again would join the call on these companies to adopt the commitment to not explore or exploit oil inside World Heritage properties. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, sir, for your information. So now I turn again to committee members for the comments on this draft resolution. Je vois la France. Madame, vous avez la parole. Après le Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ce point avait déjà été abordé lors de la 36e session. Il a alors été pris note de l'engagement oral de Total de ne pas intervenir dans le périmètre. Lors de l'Assemblée générale des actionnaires du 11 mai, Total a indiqué, je cite, qu'il respectera la réglementation de la République démocratique du Congo ainsi que toutes les conventions internationales auxquelles il est soumis. La France encourage Total à établir également un engagement écrit. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Euh, J'invite le Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je crois que c'est un problème récurrent que nous, qui nous revient comme chaque année et qui, en réalité, est lié aux questions fondamentales de développement. On a parlé d'exploitation de, minière. Ce n'est pas l'État. Le Congo ne, ne décide pas, ou même si le Congo décide, le Congo n'a pas les moyens technologiques d'exploiter. Il faut, je crois, chercher la solution là où elle se trouve. 
Sinon, même l'année prochaine, on va reconduire ces sites-là sur la liste du patrimoine en péril parce que l'État parti réellement n'a pas les moyens de, 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 de trouver la solution à ces, ces, ces problèmes-là. Il faut le penser sous un angle de développement. Parce que le développement en Afrique, ce n'est pas la même chose qu'en Europe ou dans, dans les pays développés. Les technologies viennent d'ailleurs. Les ressources exploitées, pour la plupart, retournent ailleurs. Donc je crois qu'il faut, il faut tenir compte de ça. L'Afrique, c'est 9% des sites inscrits sur la liste du patrimoine mondial, mais 50% sur la liste en péril. Ça, ça veut dire grand-chose. Je crois qu'il faut qu'on tienne compte de ça, sinon même l'année prochaine, on va, ces sites-là, on va dire, bon, les décisions, c'est ça, et puis on, on passe. Merci beaucoup, monsieur, pour vos commentaires. Uh, I can see Germany wishes to take the floor. Please, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Uh, Germany follows with great attention the situation in, uh, in the in Republic of Congo. And um, Germany is, as may be known, a major donor of development aid to uh, Congo. Uh, and um, it has allocated only for the support of the site management uh, about 60 million euro. Um, at the same time, the, the Parliament is, the German Parliament is concerned about the situation, especially of the Virunga Natural Park, and has uh, adopted a resolution asking the German government to follow the situation uh, closely. And our Minister of Economic Cooperation has written a letter recently to, the, to his counterpart in, in uh, Kinshasa, asking him especially to um, make sure that the Republic of Congo will abide by the international obligations it has, uh, it has adopted. And um, we hope, and he did express his hope that the parliament will not change the legislation concerning mining in natural sites. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your comments. Do we have additional comments on this? Je vois le Sénégal. Merci, vous avez la parole. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous avions déjà ce matin soulevé cette question. Il n'y a pas que Total là-bas. Il y a une autre société qui s'appelle le Soco. Il y a d'autres qui ont pris des engagements. Mais il nous semble que, que la question elle est plus complexe que cela. Est-ce que les États n'ont pas le droit de faire l'inventaire de leurs ressources Est-ce que c'est un droit ou pas Je pense que entre savoir ce qu'on a et faire des exploitations, il y a une différence. Je pense qu'on devrait avancer dans le sens de l'encadrement de ces activités, être dans une posture proactive et non pas dans une posture conservatrice. Si on reste dans des postures conservatrices, c'est la loi du plus fort qui s'imposera aux États. Alors que si on est dans une logique euh, prospective, on peut bien envisager, dans tous les espaces du monde, qu'on puisse faire l'exploration et l'inventaire des ressources. Je pense que le droit à l'inventaire est un droit universel et la plupart des pays développés ont déjà fait l'inventaire de la totalité des ressources de leur sol et de leur sous-sol. Merci. Merci beaucoup, monsieur, pour vos commentaires. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires des membres du comité Germany, please, sir, please. Uh, sorry for taking the floor once more, once more on the same uh, topic. Um, I uh, got the information that um, the WWF has additional uh, information on this topic, and I would like to invite the chair to ask uh, WWF to give us this additional information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. 
So if the committee members agree, I now turn to the WWF representative to take the floor. Please, Madame Prezid. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, excusez-moi. <laughs> Et je remercie l'Allemagne pour l'occasion de me donner pour m'exprimer sur la question du Virunga. Je m'appelle René Ngongo, je coordonne le programme des industries extractives de VVF au Congo. Donc c'est à ce titre que je suis de très près tout ce qui se passe sur le Virunga. Et je parle de Virunga en tant que témoin de quelqu'un qui a grandi et qui connaît la valeur non seulement écologique de ces parcs, mais aussi sa valeur économique en termes de potentialité énorme sur le tourisme, mais aussi en termes de, de, de retombées économiques de l'exploitation du poisson dans, le, dans les lacs Édouard qui constituent le poumon économique dans cette région. Mais aujourd'hui, tout cela est menacé et les populations sont très inquiètes par la menace du pétrole. Virunga constitue pour nous un verrou parce que c'est un site, le premier parc d'Afrique créé en 1925, le, le premier site du patrimoine mondial, un site du Ramsar. Si aujourd'hui on explore et on exploite le pétrole au Virunga, tous les sites du patrimoine mondial en RDC seront exploités et menacés de disparition. Et, Monsieur le Président, chers membres de de ce comité, si cela arrive au Congo, c'est un précédent pour les autres sites du patrimoine mondial. Tout à l'heure, je partage la, la réaction de l'Estonie qui a parlé de CITES pour contrôler, pour renforcer. Mais là, est-ce qu'on va parler de CITES C'est une exploitation qui se fait, une exploration dans un site du patrimoine mondial par une entreprise qui vient de l'Europe et on a cité Soko qui vient de la Grande-Bretagne. Je ne pense pas qu'actuellement, une entreprise comme Soko peut faire l'exploration dans un site du patrimoine mondial en Angleterre. Je pense que cela doit nous interpeller et nous pousser à prendre des décisions pour sauver ces sites du patrimoine mondial. C'est un cri de détresse que je lance au nom de toutes ces communautés qui sont très inquiètes par rapport à ce projet dans les Virunga. Merci. Merci beaucoup, monsieur, pour vos commentaires. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires sur ce point Très bien. Il n'y a pas de commentaires des membres du comité, donc je, pense, je, je passe maintenant la parole au représentant de l'UICN pour des clarifications, s'il vous plaît, monsieur. Thank you. There were just some comments made that, uh, from uh, committee members to respond to. Firstly, I think uh, to uh, respond to the uh, comment of the distinguished delegate from Senegal, the, I think the general issue that you raise of the strategic approach will be um, also part of the discussion in the chapeau of item 7B. So there's a decision uh, and a, a part of the agenda where we will look at strategic issues. But I would agree that the um, idea of a, a framework uh, to approach this issue of extractives in relation to World Heritage is important. And I think in the context of Africa, the um, outcomes of the African World Heritage Fund's consideration of that, which I think have been drawn to the attention of the African Union, have a very clear and uh, important statement endorsed by a range of uh, ministers uh, within Africa that I think provides a very good starting point for taking that strategic approach. And then beyond that, I think just to uh, respond to the comment of Mali, uh, that what we're trying to articulate, I think, in this decision is there's a shared responsibility. There is a part of this issue which is about the state's um, uh, prerogative in terms of legal protection of the site, but uh, indeed, in this instance, there's a clear responsibility of companies uh, involved in exploitation to, uh, to take their responsibility as well. Uh, and I think in that context, I would just like to welcome the statement of France in support of Total, having made some additional... Um, spoken commitments to actually convey those commitments in writing because a commitment, uh, if, it is, if it is worded by Total in the phrasing, if I understood the, uh, through the translation, of a commitment to all international conventions would in fact completely entail uh, the committee's requests uh, to observe the commitment to not operate uh, within World Heritage areas. So we would very much hope that written commitment would be made and we very much uh, welcome the uh, 
the um, statement of France to try to encourage Total to take that responsibility. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Do we have additional comments on this? If this is not the case, then we are going to proceed to the revision of the draft decision. So may now I proceed to uh, say that the draft decision 37.784 is then adopted. It is adopted. So please, Mr. Devonet, proceed to the next item, please. Thank you. The second site we, in the Democratic Republic of Congo we have proposed for discussion is the Okapi Wildlife Reserve. The committee will recall, recall that, that on the 24th of June 2012, during the 36th session, the headquarters of the reserve suffered a violent attack by an armed group in which six, key, six people were killed, including two of the park guards, and 14 Okapi in captivity at the station were slaughtered. Also, the facilities and infrastructure of the headquarters were looted and destroyed by the rebels. Following the attack, a joint military operation of MUNISCO was launched to secure the area, and the park guards were able to return to the reserve at the end of August. Nevertheless, the security remains very problematic. As recently as June the 2nd, there was a new attack on one of the guard posts by the same group, which was responsible for the attack last year. It is not clear if there have been any casualties so far, but following intervention by UNESCO, MONUSCO decided to deploy a mobile brigade to the reserve to avoid a new attack on the park station. As a result of the insecurity, park staff have lost control of the south of the reserve and the buffer zone. Poaching is again increasing, and some artisanal mining sites, which had been closed by the park authorities, have been reopened. It, it was also not possible to undertake the reactive monitoring mission which was requested by the World Heritage Committee because of the security issues. The World Heritage Center and IUCN note that the results of the inventories of 2010 and 2011, which were published recent, recently, show that the degradation of the outstanding universal value continues despite the considerable efforts of the management, management authority to initiate the emergency plan for the reserve. They are concerned that with this return of the insecurity, the situation might aggravate further. They therefore recommend to maintain the property on the list of World Heritage in danger and also propose to reinstate the application of the reinforced monitoring mechanism to this site. IUCN has no further inf intervention on this site and the draft decision 36.7A8 can be found on page 15 of the English version of the working document and page 20 on the French version. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now I turn again to committee members to present their comments, if this is the case. If not, may I proceed to uh, the adoption of the draft decision 37 com A. Ah, le Mali, je vois le Mali, s'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, j'ai l'impression qu'on est dans le même cycle de guerre, d'insécurité, de conflits. Et ce sont ces conditions-là qui, dans la plupart des cas, expliquent que des espèces sont en disparition, que des biens sont, sont, sont en danger. Alors, je reviens à la première réflexion que j'avais faite, c'est de savoir s'il ne serait pas intéressant de sortir un peu du cadre de la Convention de 72 de nous intéresser aussi à d'autres conventions pour voir ce qu'elles prévoient en matière de protection des individus, en matière de protection des biens naturels et culturels. Parce que les conventions ne se, ne se contredisent pas, les, ces conventions sont complémentaires. Moi, je pense qu'il y a lieu de, de, de mener la réflexion sur, euh, si vous voulez, la partie de ces conventions-là qui prévoit aussi la protection des biens des personnes en période de conflit pour voir dans quelle mesure est-ce qu'on peut également sauver cette partie du patrimoine mondial, qu'il soit naturel ou culturel. Je vous remercie. Si on est restant dans ce cycle-là, 
d'insécurité de guerre, les sites africains vont tomber un à un dans le patrimoine mondial en péril. Uh, yes, please, sir, proceed. Thank you very much. I think uh, Mali raises an uh, important issue there. Of course, the issue is that the 1954 and the 1970 Convention only concern cultural sites. So our natural sites are unfortunately not covered by these conventions. However, I think uh, there are other, uh, issues, other means. Uh, we all know that there has been a, peacekeep, a UN peacekeeping mission operating in DRC for many years. And uh, uh, we have always uh, tried to uh, engage a dialogue with the peacekeeping mission on trying to also include uh, and, and make a special effort on the uh, protection of the sites um, uh, as part of their activities. There is a good justification for this because in the end, a lot of the armed groups actually operate from within the protected areas. The protected areas are like a safe haven for some of these groups where they also find, uh, uh, use uh, natural resource exploitation to finance their operations. It is, very, it is known in the DRC from the reports of the Security Council that uh, most of the armed groups have been financing themselves by various resource exploitation activities, including illegal mining, artisanal mining, uh, including poaching and ivory and including uh, other natural resource exploitation like uh, uh, um, uh, wood exploitation in Virunga National Park. One of the issues that has always been a problem in that sense is that actually within the mandate of the peacekeeping mission in DRC there is no specific reference to the protection of World Heritage Sites. And so that is a, uh, has been an obstacle to achieve a greater implication of the UN uh, peacekeeping forces in, uh, in the uh, protection of the sites. I think the precedent that was uh, achieved with Mali, wherein, uh, I, if I understand well, in the uh, mandate of the uh, MINUSMAR, uh, which was decided end of May, there was specific reference made to the, um, uh, uh, World Heritage, the protection of the World Heritage property. I think is a very important precedent, and we should use this to try to convince the Security Council to do this also in other cases. And in that sense, in the uh, document 7B, we have proposed uh, in the draft decision uh, language to actually call on the Security Council to uh, look at this issue also in other um, um, uh, uh, peacekeeping missions. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, your comments, sir. And uh, if the committee members have additional comments on this, if not, of course we take good note of uh, all the comments that have been uh, raised until now. So may now I proceed to uh, the adoption of draft decision 37.7A8. So it is adopted. I now invite Mr. De Bonnet to read the list of the natural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Africa region. I propose for adoption without discussion. So please, Mr. De Bonnet. So the sites which have not been discussed but uh, uh, where the draft decisions are proposed for adoption are the Kauzi Biega National Park in DRC, Draft decision 37.7A5, the Garamba National Park, also in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 37.7A6, the Salonga National Park, also in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 37.7A7, the Simeon National Park in Ethiopia, 37.7A10, the rainforests of the Atsinanana in Madagascar, 37.7A11, the Air and Tenere Natural Reserves in Niger, 37.7A12, and the Neocolocoba National Park in Senegal, 37.7A13. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, with these remarks, now we proceed to the adoption of the draft resolution of those sites that were not proposed for discussion. So, 
May I consider that the, those decisions are adopted? I now invite uh, Mr. Feng Jing uh, from the World Heritage Center to present the reports on the state of conservation of the cultural properties located in the Asia Pacific region and opened for discussion. So, Mr. Jing, please proceed to this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, distinguished committee members. The summary of the state uh, on the state of conservation of BAM and its cultural landscape can be found on page pages 60 to 63 in, of the English version and pages 63 to 67 of the French version of working document WHC 1337 30, uh, com 7A. The committee may, re may recall that BAM and its cultural landscape was inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger in July uh, 2004 after a devastating earthquake hit the property in December 2003. The benchmarks defined by the state party on the corrective measures for the property were adopted by the committee in July 2007 Decision 31 com 7822, as the desired state of conservation to be achieved by 2010. The boundary modification of the property was also adopted by the committee in July 2007. The conserva conservation management plan was developed and finalized for the property in 2008 with funding support from Japan Founding Trust available at UNESCO. Meanwhile, conservation activities at the property was also implemented thanks to the support from Italian Founding Trust. In October 2011, a joint World Heritage Center and ECOMOS reactive monitoring mission visited the property and found that there are still some milestones to be completed by the state party. A report on the state of conservation of the property was submitted by the state party on 1st February 2013. The report has detailed significant progress made towards achieving the desired state of conservation and the implementation of remaining corrective measures as adopted by the committee. The achievements of the state party, including implementation of recommendations of the committee and October 2011 monitoring mission, are summarized in the working document in front of you. No further information has been provided on this property since the distribution of working document. The World Heritage Center, ECOMOS, and ICROM recommend that the committee acknowledge the significant progress that has been made towards the implementation of the corrective measures identified for the property and commend the state party the international and the local communities on their commitment and dedication towards the preservation of this property. We are of the view that the State Party has addressed the work needed to complete the remaining corrective measures identified by the committee. Hence, we are proposing that to remove the site from list of World Heritage in danger. Nevertheless, the Center and the advisory bodies note that BAM and its cultural landscape remains vulnerable, in particular the challenges in controlling illegal construction and effective protection of the buffer zone. 
This issue will remain a challenge and will always require particular efforts to develop guidelines to ensure stronger regulative measures in the buffer zone. Also, further progress should be made by the state party with the implementation of the conservation management plan, including the development of a visitor management plan for the property. In light of this, and thanks to the cooperative efforts and uh, commitments by the international and uh, local communities, the center and the advisory bodies recommend that the committee may consider removal, removal of the property from list of World Heritage in danger. Mr. Chairperson, ECOMOS will provide its comments on this property. Please, ECOMOS, proceed. Gracias, Señor Presidente. In 26, on 26 December 2003, a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake struck BAM and the Kerman province, causing the devastating loss of human life and the significant destruction of the cultural heritage of the area. Soon after the event, the international community mobilized to identify a course of action to address the destruction at different scales. BAM was inscribed on the list of world heritage and on the list of on, on the list of danger in danger in 2004, and several corrective measures were identified. The immense commitment, the sustained efforts, and the commendable work done by the Islamic Republic of Iran, as well as the continued international support, created the conditions that enabled the desired state of conservation to be met. Notwithstanding the considerable progress made, ECOMOS would like to underscore that there will remain many challenges to face in the coming years. This will, this will entail considerable efforts and resources to ensure the sustainability of conservation and management measures in place. Of particular importance, as noted by the World Heritage Center before, will be the definition of development guidelines and criteria for interventions to ensure a balanced approach to, to conservation. BAM, like the terraces of the Philippine Cordilleras, Lahore, and many other properties that have been removed from the list of World Heritage in Danger in past year, send important message to us, the heritage community at large. These properties illustrate the very spirit of the convention, where conservation and protection of heritage places is prioritized and considered the driving force behind decision making. These properties are also a model of how the list of World Heritage in Danger can be used as a powerful tool to mobilize international solidarity and support for local communities and national authorities in their efforts to sustain and protect the outstanding universal value of properties. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Now, I would like to ask committee members if they have further comments on this. I see the delegation of Japan, so Japan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Japan delegation would like to uh, congratulate Iranian government on, on the successful removal of this very important site from endangered list. And also would like to uh, praise, highly praise uh, its effort, uh, tremendous effort to make it possible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your comments. So if we are all uh, in agreement, we can proceed to the adoption of this draft decision. So may now I assume that draft decision 37.7831 is then adopted. And of course, I would like to congratulate the Islamic Republic of Iran for this effort. Does the representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran would like to take the floor on this item? I offer you the, 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 the floor if, the if you want and if you are in the room. No representatives? Okay.
I now invite Mr. Jing to read the list of the cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Asia Pacific region, which are proposed for adoption without discussion. So, Mr. Feng, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The following cultural heritage properties on the list of World Heritage in Danger from the Asia Pacific region and the relevant draft decisions will be adopted by the committee without discussion. They are First, Minaret and Archaeological Remains of Jam in Afghanistan, Draft Decision 37.7A.29. The next slide is Cultural Landscape and Archaeological Remains of the Bamiyan Valley, also in Afghanistan, Draft Decision 37.7A.30. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jing, if there is no objection uh, for the committee to take note of the, the State of Conservation reports, uh, now I declare the decisions read out adopted. So now we are on the cultural sites of Europe and North America. I now give the floor to the delegation of the Russian Federation to present the to the committee the reason it wishes to open the state of conservation of the World Heritage Medieval Monuments in Kosovo. Excellency, Madam Ambassador, you have the floor, please. Уважаемые коллеги, спасибо большое. Наше предложение было открыть, но не дискутировать этот вопрос, а отложить до следующей сессии, так как мы делали в предыдущие годы. Значит, я хочу напомнить о том, что многое, что сейчас происходит, в частности, по части консервации и сохранения объектов Косово, я хочу напомнить, что в том числе и Российская Федерация активно участвует в финансировании этого процесса. Тем не менее, мы знаем, что политически этот процесс еще не урегулирован, поэтому мы предлагаем перенести рассмотрение на следующую сессию. Спасибо. Thank you very much, madam, for your comments. I recognize the delegation of India who wishes to take the floor. So, Mr. Ambassador, thank you, Chair. Um, I would uh, support the statement, the request of uh, the Russian Federation. I think in the fitness of things, we must leave this to the next session of the committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Now I give the floor to the representative of Germany, this Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to join my previous, the previous speakers, the distinguished ambassadors of Russia and India, in asking to adjourn the debate on this issue until the next uh, meeting of the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment, Mr. Ambassador. Now I turn to the delegation of France. Madame, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La France soutient la proposition faite par la Fédération de Russie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Et je vois l'Algérie. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. L'Algérie soutient la proposition de la République de Russie. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Je vois la délégation des Émirats arabes unis. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous avons aussi été le mot de la délégation des Émirats arabes unis. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires des membres du comité Si ce n'est pas le cas, so I now invite you to adopt the draft decision 37.7A34 concerning this property. And if there is no objection or further comments, we can adopt it. So it is. 
I now invite Mrs. Todd to read the list of the cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Europe and North America region, which are proposed for adoption without discussion. So, Madam, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The cultural properties um, in the region of Europe and North America, which are inscribed uh, on the list of World Heritage in Danger, are being adopted, the decisions of which are being adopted today without discussion, are the following. Bagrati Cathedral and Gelati Monastery, uh, Georgia. City Museum Pshketa, Georgia. Medieval, uh, excuse me, a Liverpool uh, Maritime Mercantile City. And this is the end of uh, the list of cultural properties in the World Heritage in Danger uh, in the region of Europe and North America. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there is no objection for the committee to take a note of the State of Conservation Report, I declare uh, the decisions read out, then adopted. Thank you very much. I now invite Mr. Cesar Moreno Triana from the World Heritage Center to present the reports on the state of conservation of the cultural properties located in the Latin America and the Caribbean region and open for discussion. So, Mr. Moreno, you have the floor, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are no SOC uh, reports open for discussion, so I am going to read the list of the four World Heritage properties. Um, proposed in the Latin American and the Caribbean region and the relevant decisions adopted without discussion. Fortifications on the Caribbean side of Panama, Portobello, San Lorenzo, Panama. The document 37.7A.36. Umberson and Santa Laura from Chile. Decision 37.7A.37. Chan Chan Archaeological Site from Peru, decision 37.7A.38, Coro and its port from Venezuela, Dec draft decision 37.7A.39. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Moreno. If there is no objections for the committee to take note of the State of Conservation reports, May I assume that we can adopt the decisions that were presented? So they are adopted. Now we move to the cultural sites of the Africa region. I now invite Mr. Lazar Elundu Asomo from the World Heritage Center to present the, the reports of the State of Conservation of the Cultural Properties located in the Africa region and open for discussion. Mr. Elundu. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, je vais commencer par le, le bien Tombouctou. Alors, ce bien a été inscrit sur la liste du patrimoine mondial en 1988. Vous vous souviendrez que lors de la 36e session, le comité a décidé d'inscrire ce bien sur la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril en raison de l'occupation des régions nord du Mali par les groupes armés, parce que les conditions optimales de leur protection n'étaient plus réunies et ceux-ci devenaient menacés par un danger prouvé, précis, imminent, en raison des premières profanations et destructions de mausolées en mai 2012. Et d'ailleurs, les membres du comité ont par la suite tous été témoins des destructions de mausolées qui s'en sont suivies au cours des jours euh, qui avaient suivi la décision prise par le comité, confirmant ainsi les craintes de nouvelles destructions que l'ICOMOS et le Centre du patrimoine mondial et l'ICROM avaient exprimées. Depuis lors, L'UNESCO a réalisé un ensemble d'actions destinées à répondre aux décisions 36.com B.106 et 36.com B.107. Ces actions sont résumées dans le rapport qui vous a été transmis. Mais je voudrais rappeler la création du compte spécial par la Directrice générale 
la réalisation de passeports et de cartes sur le patrimoine culturel du nord du Mali, la visite de la directrice générale à Tombouctou le 2 février dernier en compagnie du président de la France, l'organisation d'une journée de solidarité pour le Mali ayant abouti à l'élaboration d'un plan d'action pour la réhabilitation du patrimoine culturel et la sauvegarde des manuscrits anciens du Mali. La seule information nouvelle qui n'est pas disponible dans le rapport concerne les résultats de la mission de l'UNESCO qui a été organisée du 31 mai au 8 juin dernier à Bamako et à Tombouctou. Cette mission a été organisée avec le concours du gouvernement malien dont le ministre de la Culture, qui est arrivé ici à Phnom Penh, a personnellement assuré la coordination. La mission a également reçu le soutien logistique de la MINUSMA dans le cadre de l'application de la résolution 2100 du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies qui demande de protéger le patrimoine culturel en collaboration avec l'UNESCO. La mission était composée de 16 experts représentant les institutions et organisations suivantes, l'UNESCO, le gouvernement du Mali, le ministère de la Culture et le ministère de l'Enseignement supérieur de la Recherche scientifique, le gouvernement de la France avec la Bibliothèque nationale de France et le Centre international de la construction en terre, Cratère, l'ICOMOS, l'ICROM, l'IFLA, Aga Khan Trust for Culture, l'École du patrimoine africain, le Fonds pour le patrimoine mondial africain, la MINUSMA et l'Union européenne. La mission s'est rendue à Tombouctou le 6 juin afin de mesurer l'ampleur des dégâts. Elle a eu une séance de travail avec les leaders de la communauté et a visité la majorité des sites de mausolées, les trois mosquées, les bibliothèques de manuscrits dont le centre Ahmed Baba et la vieille ville. Il ressort de cette visite les constatations suivantes. 14 des mausolées du patrimoine mondial ont été en réalité détruites. La violence des destructions et la détermination des destructeurs étaient encore perceptibles à la vue de tous les sites qui ont été rasés, que ce soit les abris ou les sépulcres. Toutes les trois mosquées ont souffert de l'occupation car elles n'ont pas été entretenues pendant cette période difficile. La mosquée de Sidi Yahya est la plus affectée, non seulement parce que la porte dite secrète a été arrachée par les occupants, mais surtout parce que les problèmes structurels se sont aggravés, ce qui va nécessiter une restauration urgente des toitures et du mirab. La vieille ville qui constitue le périmètre de la zone tampon est elle aussi très dégradée, avec des habitations qui ont pour certains été vandalisées, ou qui se sont écroulés par faute d'entretien ou d'abandon par les habitants qui ont dû fuir la ville. Les données sur la situation des manuscrits sont désormais précises. 4203 manuscrits ont été perdus, dont une bonne partie brûlée ou volée. Près de 300 000 manuscrits ont été exfiltrés et transportés à Bamako, dont 27 000 du centre Ahmed Baba. Ceux-ci sont en besoin urgent de leur conservation physique, du fait des conditions climatiques humides différentes de celles plus sèches de Tombouctou. Le patrimoine immatériel a également été affecté avec l'interdiction de cérémonies traditionnelles telles que le mahlout, les cérémonies de pratiques traditionnelles de construction, ce qui a provoqué des troubles moraux caractérisés par la peur et le désespoir. L'autorité de gestion n'est pas encore devenue opérationnelle sur le site, en effet, une partie de son personnel n'est pas revenue à Tombouctou et ces nouveaux bâtiments en construction ont été complètement vandalisés. Enfin, je voudrais vous informer que les résultats de cette mission à Tombouctou ont été présentés lors d'un atelier national sur la protection renforcée des biens culturels du Mali qui s'est déroulé le 8 juin à Bamako. L'atelier a permis de définir un ensemble de priorités d'intervention et faire le point sur les appuis techniques et financiers Possible. Je m'excuse d'avoir été long, Monsieur le Président, mais l'ICOMOS souhaite également faire un commentaire. Uh, thank you, Chair. The devastation that is being caused to Timbuktu is, as you've seen, multifaceted. It's destroyed the fabric of many tombs, 
It's resulted in the complete destruction of some 4,000 priceless manuscripts, which testified to the greatness of Timbuktu as a center of religion and learning, and whose scientific or religious contents we will now never know. But perhaps equally importantly, this devastation has disrupted the essential routine interaction between people and buildings, without which the mosques and the surrounding city would not survive. The mudstone and timber architecture of Timbuktu relies on regular seasonal maintenance. For the mosques, this is a time-honored communal work carried out according to long-standing skills and traditions. After a gap of two seasons, this work is now being revived for the mosques, starting with the replastering of the Sankori Mosque. For the buildings of the city, the situation looks less positive. Many buildings have been vandalized and some have been abandoned. The committee has for many ses sessions stressed the need for the city to be protected as an essential component for the mosques and also for its own inherent value. Currently, there is no management authority in place and thus no focus for reviving this extraordinarily important and complex city. The community is understandably anxious to make progress with rebuilding the tombs and have the skills and knowledge to do so. Nevertheless, there is a need for a reconstruction strategy, as recognized in the action plan, to be agreed at the commencement of this process so that all can say to future generations how it was done and who agreed. As a first step, the remains of the tombs need to be documented in dialogue with each of the families associated with them and all known documentation assembled as a basis for moving forward. ICOMOS is available to support this process in any way it can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your information. Now I turn to the committee members to uh, present their comments, if this is the case. So the floor is yours. Je vois la France. Madame, vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, il n'est nul besoin de rappeler l'implication de la France au Mali. Vous la connaissez tous. Euh, je voudrais tout simplement souligner que c'est un, un triple engagement. Un engagement politique, tout d'abord. Un engagement militaire, ensuite, pour lequel le Président de la République a reçu le prix Oufouet Boigny à l'UNESCO le 5 juin dernier. Un engagement culturel, enfin et surtout, puisque la France a coordonné avec l'UNESCO la journée de solidarité pour le Mali le 18 février, qui a permis, comme cela a déjà été souligné, la rédaction d'un plan d'action pour la protection du patrimoine malien. La France a envoyé deux experts dans la mission d'évaluation de l'UNESCO en juin, un spécialiste de l'architecture de terre, ainsi qu'une conservatrice de la Bibliothèque nationale de France, spécialiste des manuscrits. Dans l'attente des résultats, la France prend toutes les dispositions pour accompagner les recommandations qui ont été prises le 8 juin à Bamako. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, Madame, pour vos commentaires. Tout à fait important. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires de membres du comité sur ce sujet Je vois le Sénégal. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Euh, merci, euh, <coughs> Monsieur le Président. Euh, je commencerai par remercier la communauté internationale pour tout ce qui a été fait. Et en tant qu'Africains, nous avons une sensibilité particulière pour euh, Tombouctou. On a souvent l'habitude de dire que l'histoire de l'Afrique est essentiellement orale. Or, Tombouctou a toujours prouvé le contraire. C'est l'histoire écrite de l'Afrique qui était en danger là-bas. Et je pense que les efforts qui sont en cours devraient nous permettre d'être plus attentif pour la suite. C'est bon de conserver les manuscrits. C'est très important de les étudier et de les faire étudier. Et je pense que les programmes qui vont venir par la suite, à l'image de ce que l'UNESCO avait fait à l'époque pour l'histoire générale de l'Afrique, devraient avoir un volet spécifique 
pour la traduction et la transcription de ces manuscrits qui ne doivent pas être livrés à la critique rongeuse des seules souris. Euh, je voudrais aussi peut-être qu'on donne euh, la parole à l'État parti pour qu'il nous dise euh, où est-ce est qu'ils en sont exactement à l'heure où nous parlons aujourd'hui. Merci. Merci beaucoup, messieurs, pour vos commentaires. Je vois l'Afrique du Sud. Vous avez la parole. Merci, M. le Chairman. Firstly, la délégation de la South Africa voudrait que recommande les interventions qui ont été faites so far en Mali. La South Africa a été très impliquée avec la création de l'infrastructure pour la protection des manuscrits en Mali et reste concernée concerned. Uh, by the situation there. However, we support the interventions that have been made and we would recommend the support of other state parties towards the reconstruction uh, of, the, of the destroyed infrastructure in Mali as well as the digitization of the manuscripts. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Y a-t-il des autres commentaires Je vois le Mali. Monsieur, vous savez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le Président, si nous prenons la parole ce matin, c'est d'abord pour remercier la communauté internationale, sincèrement, pour être vraiment au chevet du Mali. Parce qu'à un moment donné, on était, on était de l'autre côté. On avait basculé entièrement. La vie avait basculé au Mali. Et à un moment donné, on, on se posait même la question de... On se posait la question de savoir est-ce que le Mali va continuer. Heureusement que les pays amis nous ont tendu la main. La France en première position, qui s'est engagée militairement. Le, le nord du pays a été libéré, mais beaucoup d'autres choses restent à faire. Je ne, je ne reviendrai pas, Monsieur le Président, sur l'ensemble de ces éléments, mais je voudrais souligner quand même quelques points forts de l'État parti du Mali, nous avons choisi depuis euh, l'année dernière à Saint-Pétersbourg délibérément, délibérément de nous inscrire au patrimoine mondial en péril et au mécanisme de suivi renforcé. Ceci tout simplement pour exprimer la volonté de l'État parti du Mali à une meilleure application de la Convention de 1972. Donc, les dernières informations qui ont été données sont justes. Ce sont les, 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 les informations qui sont issues de la mission conjointe UNESCO euh, État du Mali. Pour l'instant, nous nous sommes dit que l'État parti fait face à deux éléments majeurs. Il y aura bientôt les résultats, les, 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 les élections présidentielles en fin juillet. Et ceci est également suivi par la saison des pluies. Donc, face à ces deux éléments-là, on ne pourra pas faire d'action. Et nous attendons d'un moment à l'autre les conclusions issues de la rencontre de Bamako. Je vous remercie. Enfin, je voudrais aussi, si possible, euh, faire intervenir certains de nos amis de la Convention de 1954, en l'occurrence M. Gouz, qui a beaucoup fait dans le cadre de la sauvegarde de ce patrimoine. Je souhaiterais, je souhaiterais que, étant membre de la mission, qu'il prenne la, que vous, vous lui donnez la parole, M. le Président. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Donc, euh, je, euh, je demande s'il y a-t-il des autres commentaires des membres du comité sur ce point. Sinon, euh, j'invite euh, Merci. Donc, euh, si vous me permettez, j'invite le président du comité euh, de la convention de deuxième protocole. De, 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 le deuxième protocole de la Convention de 54 pour présenter ses, ses commentaires sur ce sujet. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Microphone not working, so... If, if, if you can come him here to the podium, sir, please. Yeah. 
Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Je remercie également la, la délégation du, du Mali de m'avoir fait euh, m'avoir proposé d'intervenir. Tout d'abord, je voudrais aussi remercier les autorités cambodgiennes pour l'excellent accueil que nous avons reçu ici. Je voudrais saluer l'action du Mali, puisqu'effectivement, dans la foulée des événements l'année passée, le Mali a aussi adhéré dans l'année même, en novembre 2012, au deuxième protocole à la Convention de 54 sur la protection des biens culturels en cas de conflit armé. Ce qui lui a permis notamment d'enclencher un mécanisme d'assistance au niveau du Fonds pour la protection des biens culturels en cas de conflit armé, qui a été actionné de manière tout à fait complémentaire par rapport au Fonds d'urgence créé par l'UNESCO et donc qui a été axé plutôt sur la protection et la sauvegarde de biens mobiliers dans les musées. En effet, notre, notre second protocole, enfin la Convention 1954, couvre la protection des biens immobiliers mais également des biens mobiliers. Et je pense que quand on voit euh, certains dossiers euh, qui arrivent aujourd'hui sur la table, j'inviterai vraiment les États partis non seulement à ratifier le deuxième protocole, mais aussi à proposer des, des biens sur la liste de protection renforcée, de renforcée, ce qui permet de les immuniser en cas de conflit armé. Dernier point, le deuxième protocole prévoit des mesures de prévention et de sauvegarde en temps de paix, afin de couvrir tous les risques, qu'ils soient naturels ou humains. Et donc, la prévention des risques, la réduction des risques, euh, nous impose de créer davantage de liens de synergie avec le patrimoine mondial, l'ICORP, l'ICROM et l'USDR. Je pense que cette question est vraiment importante et au cœur de l'actualité. Et je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci beaucoup, monsieur, pour vos commentaires. Thank you very much for all the comments that have been raised. I now invite you, dear colleagues of the committee, to adopt the draft decision uh, 377A19, if we are all in agreement of this. Monsieur Lundou, vous voulez prendre la parole? Allez-y. No, uh, thank you, Chair. This is just to uh, bring to the attention of the distinguished members of the World Heritage Committee that uh, the Honorable Minister of Culture of Mali arrived today and uh, unfortunately had to go to, back to his hotel to, 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 to rest and could not attend this and may want probably to uh, save you a statement tomorrow if the Distinguished World Heritage Committee wish to, to listen to him when he comes back. Thank you very much, Mr. Elundu. I think that, of course, all the committee members could be in agreement of this uh, very important uh, statement that we would like to hear from the Distinguished Minister from, the, from Mali. So if we are all in agreement, I would like to ask Secretariat to include this uh, brief statement of uh, the distinguished minister to, to, for, the tomorrow, for the agenda of tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow we will listen to, to the minister, uh, having in mind, of course, the, the, the importance of this item. So uh, now I come back to uh, the adoption of the draft decision 37.7a. 19. If there are no further comments on this, now I think the decision is adopted. Monsieur Lundou, s'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez passer au prochain point de discussion. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, il s'agit du tombeau des Askia. Euh, nous n'avons pas reçu de nouvelles informations simplement parce que les conditions de sécurité euh, sont très progressives et la mission euh, n'a pas pu se rendre sur euh, le terrain. Donc, euh, elle est prévue, cette mission est prévue dans les, les, mois, les semaines à venir après la saison des pluies afin d'aller faire le même travail que celui que nous avons effectué à Tombouctou. Mais je pense que l'ICOMOS souhaite faire un commentaire. Merci. Le représentant de l'ICOMOS, s'il vous plaît. Gracias, señor presidente. Unfortunately, the, the, we don't have latest information from this property as we have in Timbuktu.
but we do have the preliminary state of conservation report from the state party that underscores that due to the armed conflict, we couldn't have regular maintenance, it couldn't be carried out, but apparently no acts of vandalism have occurred at the site. ECOMOS, of course, will support, as soon as the conditions allow, the detailed technical evaluation and the identification of priority corrective measures. Notwithstanding, uh, we deem that now that security conditions have somewhat improved, the state party could consider the continuation of traditional maintenance practices. So in, while the definition of the conservation strategy is uh, carried out, architectural elements do not decay further uh, while the mission takes place. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Now I turn to the committee members to present the comments, if is the case, on this decision. The floor is yours. Le Sénégal. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Merci, uh, Monsieur le Président. Uh, la question que je pose uh, concerne d'ailleurs aussi Tombouctou. Tout à l'heure, euh, le représentant du Mali a dit qu'en raison de la saison des pluies euh, imminente et d'un certain nombre de facteurs, euh, qu'il sera très difficile d'agir en ce moment. La question que je voudrais poser, c'est est-ce qu'il y a des mesures conservatoires qui sont prises pour que les monuments détruits ne fondent pas pendant l'hivernage, par exemple parce que c'est une architecture de terre, c'est très sensible à l'eau. Est-ce qu'on a prévu un système, des bâches ou des choses comme ça, pour stabiliser le temps que l'hivernage passe Merci. Merci beaucoup pour vos commentaires, monsieur. Donc, je passe la parole à monsieur Lundou pour les clarifications. Je remercie le, le distingué délégué du Sénégal pour cette question qui est effectivement très importante, que nous avons discuté avec les autorités maliennes euh, qui vont organiser, euh, euh, si nécessaire, le plus rapidement possible le crépissage euh, annuel qui n'a pas été fait au cours des deux dernières années dû à la situation de la crise. Donc ça, c'est pour le cas de, du tombeau des Askia, où euh, ils sont en contact avec les autorités qui commence à arriver sur place pour voir dans quelle mesure euh, il y aurait éventuellement des actions très urgentes à mener pour euh, stabiliser ou en tout cas euh, euh, stopper les dégradations sur les, les toits des deux des mosquées qui, qui, jouent, qui sont autour de la, du, du tombeau des Askia ou alors le, le tombeau lui-même. Pour revenir à Tombouctou tout à l'heure, effectivement la question des, des tas détruits se pose et il est envisagé euh, de permettre à la communauté euh, de mettre euh, des moyens de protection temporaire euh, afin que ces euh, mausolées puissent passer l'hivernage et que le travail de documentation puisse se terminer et que la reconstruction puisse enfin commencer. Merci beaucoup, M. Lundou. Maintenant, je passe la parole au représentant du Mali. Vous avez la parole. Merci, M. le Président. Euh, suite à la mission d'évaluation à Tombouctou, euh, dans, au sein de l'équipe, il, il y avait des architectes maliens et d'autres techniciens qui ont donc euh, pris la mesure des choses. Et les réflexions sont effectivement en cours pour prendre des mesures, mesures conservatoires, des mesures de protection euh, de ce qui reste pour euh, passer la saison, la saison de, des pluies. C'est la même chose à Gao. Le gestionnaire doit retourner cette semaine, le nouveau chef de la mission culturelle. Donc euh, apparemment, sur place, il va, il va s'organiser avec la population parce que même, je crois que... Euh, même pendant la saison de pluie, puisque les pluies ne sont pas aussi fortes comme au sud, euh, il est possible de faire quelque chose. Il est même prévu de faire le crépissage de, du minaret de la mosquée de Djingareiber, qui a été récemment restauré par Agaka. Les dispositions sont en train d'être prises dans ce sens. Ouais. Merci beaucoup, monsieur, pour vos commentaires. 
Y a-t-il des autres interventions sur ce point Le Sénégal. Merci, sur la parole. Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Moi, je pense de manière plus précise à la mise hors d'eau. Est-ce que des dispositions sont prises pour mettre hors d'eau les ruines que nous avons vues Oui, mais... Monsieur Lundu, avant de vous donner la parole, euh, je passe la parole au distingué représentant du Mali et après on revient vers vous. Euh, le Mali. Oui, pour répondre à notre distingué représentant du Sénégal, je dirais que sur le terrain, il y a des dispositions qui sont prises par la communauté elle-même. Il y a un engagement fort de la communauté locale de Tombouctou à sauvegarder ce qui peut être sauvegardé. Nous avons encore des éléments qui sont visibles sur les sites détruits et qui peuvent être récupérables. Donc, de commun accord avec les, les responsables des mausolées, les imams des mosquées, parce qu'au niveau de chaque site, il y a un, un comité de gestion, cette communauté s'est engagée, si vous voulez, à mettre de côté ce qui peut être récupéré et être réutilisé. Dans certains cas, la communauté même nous a, a, a prouvé aux, aux experts sur le terrain qu'elle est même prête pour la reconstruction. Elle n'attend que la réaction de la communauté internationale et de l'État parti du Mali. La communauté est fortement engagée. Merci beaucoup, messieurs, pour vos clarifications. Donc maintenant, je pense, la par... je pense... passe la parole à M. Elundou, s'il vous plaît. Merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est juste pour euh, euh, répondre aux distingués délégués du Sénégal que des abris temporaires vont être euh, érigés sur tous les sites qui ont été rasés. Donc, vous avez vu les détritus, l'État. Euh, la communauté a souhaité que la mission voie les sites en l'état des destructions. Euh, et il est aussi de la responsabilité, de notre responsabilité, que nous les aidions à construire ces abris temporaires le plus vite possible. Et sur la... Ces mausolées sont situés dans des lieux euh, sacrés, dans des lieux, dans des cimetières. Et c'est important que ce soit la communauté qui prenne l'entière responsabilité euh, de construire ces abris temporaires. Et c'est ce qui est, qui est effectivement prévu euh, dans les, les semaines à venir. Merci. Thank you very much, Mr. Elundu. So, may now I proceed to uh, the adoption of the draft decision. Uh, of course, taking good note of the comments that ha and clarifications that has been raised until now on uh, this very important issue. So, may now I proceed to the adoption of draft decision 37.7820. If there are no further comments, the decision is adopted. Thank you very much. I now invite Mr. Elundu to read the list of the cultural properties inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger located in the Africa region, which are proposed for adoption without discussion. Mr. Elundu, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Les... Alors, nous avons les tombes des rois du Buganda à Kasubi, euh, projet de décision 37.com 7A.21. Et les ruines de Kilwakisiwane et de Msongomnara, en République unie de Tanzanie, projet de décision 37.com 7A.22. Merci beaucoup, M. Lundou. If there is no objection uh, for the committee to take note of the state of conservation reports, uh, I may assume that we can adopt the decisions uh, as they were presented. So the decisions are adopted. Thank you very much. I now invite uh, Mrs. Vernick Dog. Dog, excuse me for the pronunciation from the World Heritage Center to present the reports on the state of conservation of the cultural properties located in the Arab status region and open for discussion. So, Madame Dosh, 
Vous avez la parole. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Le site euh, proposé pour discussion dans la région arabe est le site d'Abou Mena, en Égypte, que vous trouverez, page 63 du document 7 à Ad, en français et 60 en anglais. Le complexe historique euh, monastique d'Abou Mena est inscrit sur la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril depuis 2001. Les recommandations des deux missions de suivi réactif de 2005 et de 2009 n'ont pas encore été mises en œuvre à l'exception d'un très vaste programme d'assèchement de la zone. L'étude détaillée des vestiges, le programme de conservation et la préparation du plan de gestion n'ont pas encore pu être menées. En revanche, des travaux de démantèlement et de reconstruction ont été entrepris sur certains murs de la grande basilique comme vous le voyez sur les images qui vous sont présentées ici, et qui affectent l'authenticité du bien. Une nouvelle mission de suivi réactif a eu lieu en novembre 2012, qui a constaté une aggravation de l'état général de conservation du bien. Outre ce début de reconstruction, les problèmes essentiels sont la montée des sels souterrains et la désagrégation pardon, des pierres très friables, la détérioration accrue des structures, la prolifération de nouvelles constructions à l'intérieur du bien et une absence de contrôle. Monsieur le Président, je crois que l'ICOMOS souhaiterait ajouter quelque chose. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Madame. Et bien sûr, je passe la parole maintenant à la représentante de l'ICOMOS. Merci, uh, Chair. Uh, Abu Mena was inscribed on the list of World Heritage in Danger in 2001, largely because of the devastating impact of a surrounding land reclamation program, which caused a dramatic increase in the water table of the ground beneath the archaeological remains of the property. In the intervening years, a dewatering project has been started to pump water out on an ongoing basis, and the first of three phases has been implemented. The recent mission reported on cru two crucial aspects of this problem. The process of pumping water is now seen as unsustainable in the long term and has also had devastating results in terms of the deposition of soluble salts on the archaeology. These salts in turn lead to rapid deterioration of the stone blocks. The dewatering project for the second and third phases has therefore been abandoned. On the positive side, the recognition of the impossibility of pumping water out of the property on a long-term basis has led to a reassessment of the agricultural regime in the surrounding area in order to eliminate the problem and uh, through introducing a new drip-feed irrigation system that lowers the water table. On the negative side, the salt problem is now the most pressing threat to the property and the mission recommended that the affected areas should be reburied as the only cost-effective way to treat the problem in that part of the property that has been dewatered. The mission also highlighted the importance of the property as a pilgrimage site that attracts large numbers of pilgrims and the need for a visitor strategy to ensure that adequate and appropriate facilities for, for pilgrims are provided within an agreed framework that respects the main structures and particularly the basilica. Finally, the mission reiterated the need for basic surveys, conservation plans, and a management plan to be progressed so that work can be undertaken on the basis of adequate knowledge of the attributes of outstanding universal value. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Now I turn again to the committee members to present their uh, remarks and comments on this issue. I see, je vois le Qatar. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, vous avez la parole. Shukran, Sayyid al-Rais. Nawada an nasal al-dawla al-taraf. Ma hiya al-ijraat al-lati tamma tanfiduha wa tilka al-mukhattat laha li tahsin halat al-mawqa'a. Shukran. 
Merci beaucoup, monsieur l'ambassadeur. Euh, avant de passer la parole à l'État parti, je passe la parole à la distinguée représentante de l'Allemagne. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for having given me the floor again. Um, I, do, I would like to join uh, the, the request of the distinguished delegate of Qatar. Um, our delegation um, would like to ask uh, the state party to give its view on the developments, and to our knowledge, there are also some positive developments to report to the committee, and we would like to know it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. If there are further comments on this from the committee members, if not the case, I will uh, pass the floor to uh, the State Party. So the distinguished representative of Egypt, you have the floor. Microphone not working. So if one of the committee members can No, if one of the committee members can just give one seat or a microphone. Uh, sir, uh, Ambassador, you can come to the, to, the, to the Emirates to present your statement, please. شكرا شكرا سيد رئيس الاجراءات اللي اتخذتها مصر بشان موقع ابو منه تم استقبال لجنه مشتركه من الايكو موس ومركز التراث العالمي نهايه العام الماضي لمتابعه تنفيذ قرارات اللجنه في دوراتها السابقه تم تنفيذ مشروع تخفيض منسوب المياه الجوفيه بمقدار 5.5 متر عمق في بعض المناطق و7 متر عمق على مسافه 300 فدان للبدء في أعمال الترميم والتجهيز لها وانتهى المشروع بالكامل بتكلفة حوالي 50 مليون جنيه مصري حوالي 10 مليون دولار أمريكي تم إسناد مشروع الترميم بالمنطقة إلى شركة متخصصة للنظر في الأحجار التالفة والقطع الأثرية بدأنا التنفيذ في تشييد صور حول الموقع بتكلفة حوالي أكثر من مليون دولار أمريكي نعمل على تنفيذ مشروع لتشغيل طولمبات للحفاظ على منسوب المياه الجوفية بتكلفة حوالي 800 ألف دولار سنويا تم الانتهاء من وضع تصميم مركز للزوار وتهيئة الطرق المؤدية للموقع وهناك لجنة وطنية تم تشكيلها أخيرا على المستوى الوزاري للنظر في هذا الموضوعات ومنها وضع توثيق كامل للموقع إعداد موقع على شبكة الإنترنت وترسيم منطقة خاصة للموقع والعمل على إزالة المباني المخلفة التي تم تشهيدها خلال السنتين الماضيتين مع تحفظنا الكامل على الطابع السلبي الذي جاءت عليه صياغه مشروع القرار إلا أننا نؤكد حرصنا الكامل على تنفيذ كافة ما تطلبه اللجنة بموجب مشروع القرار ونأمل أن يتم نقل الموقع إلى قائمة التراث العالمي بمجرد الانتهاء من هذه الإجراءات خلال العام القادم شكراً Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your comments. And now I give the floor to Algeria. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Donc l'Algérie, tout en souscrivant à l'essentiel donc du contenu du rapport et du projet de décision, ne peut ne peut s'empêcher de disons d'apprécier les les efforts réalisés par par l'Égypte dans les conditions difficile que nous connaissons et encourage et appuie fortement le processus courageux donc de sortie du site de la liste du patrimoine culturel en péril donc nous appuyons et encourageons donc l'état parti à poursuivre dans ses efforts pour sortir le site de la liste du patrimoine mondial en péril merci merci à vous monsieur et maintenant j'ai envie le Qatar à prendre la parole Monsieur l'ambassadeur. شكرا سيد الرئيس لاعطاء الكلمه مره اخرى على ضوء ما سمعناه من سعاده سفير مصر 
نقترح لدينا اقتراح لتعديل صيغة القرار لو سمحتوا لنا القرار الحالي صيغة يعني مشروع القرار الحالي تتسم بنوع من السلبية ف ونعتقد أن الدولة الطرف قامت بالعديد من الإجراءات لحماية الموقع أهمها سحب المياه الجوفية وهذا ما لم يتم ذكره في مشروع القرار ونأمل أن تضاف فقرة جديدة بعد الفقرة الثانية مفادها نص الفقرة توجيه الشكر للدولة الطرف للإجراءات التي اتخذتها منذ اجتماع اللجنة في دورتها السادسة والثلاثين وخاصة لانتهاء من مشروع سحب المياه الجوفية نود أيضا إضافة جملة في نهاية الفقرة الأخيرة أو إضافة فقرة جديدة أنه في حالة قيام في حالة قيام الدولة الطرف بتنفيذ كافة الإجراءات الواردة في مشروع القرار فيمكن للجنة أن تنظر في الدورة اللاحقة في الدورة التالية في نقل الموقع إلى قائمة التراث العالمي وذلك على سبيل تشجيع الدولة لاتخاذ الإجراءات واستمرار اتخاذها للحفاظ يعني استمرار اتخاذ, اتخاذ الإجراءات اللازمة للحفاظ على وصيانة الموقع وشكرا je vous invite en tout cas de, si c'est possible, de nous adresser par écrit vos amendements afin qu'ils soient inclus sur le texte tel qu'il sera présenté sur les écrans. Donc, en vous attendant, je passe la parole maintenant à l'Irak. Monsieur, vous avez la parole. ونثمن الجهود التي قامت فيها مصر ونؤيد ونؤكد ما طلب فيه سفير قطر بالحرف الواحد شكرا جزيلا شكرا ميرسي بوكو مسيو ناو اي انفايت تو تيك ذا فلور تو ذا ديستينغوش ديليجيت اوف انديا بليز مستر امباسادر ثانك يو مستر تشير I um, share the sense that the actions taken, the activities undertaken, should get recognition in this committee. And that the note of optimism, which obviously is coming from the, the actions taken by the government of Egypt, should actually be a basis for a future consideration in the not too distant future of possible de-inscription from the list of danger. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your comments. Now I give the floor to the United Arab Emirates. Sir, you have the floor. Shukran, Sayyid Rais. I think that we can the work that والكل يدرك بأن هذا هذا الإجراء هو من باب حث الدول على الحفاظ على هذه المواقع التاريخية والثقافية كهذا الموقع ولمدامة الدولة كما عبر مندوب مصر قد استشعرت مسؤوليتها بناء على تقرير اللجنة فأن الغرض قد بدأ يتحقق وهناك إجراءات على الأرض بدأ تنفيذها لذلك نحن نشجع هذه الجهود التي قامت بها وتقوم بها مصر في النهاية هذا الموقع هو ملك لنا جميعا كبقية المواقع التراثية في العالم نحن نؤيد المقترح القطري ونشيد بتدخلات بقية الأطراف التي عبرت عن موقفة الإمارات تشارككم هذا الرأي Merci beaucoup, messieurs. Euh, maintenant, je passe la parole à la délégation de France qui sera suivie par la Fédération de Russie. Madame, vous avez la parole. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, nous voudrions saluer les efforts qui ont été accomplis par les autorités égyptiennes et, au vu des informations qui nous ont été communiquées, euh, nous soutenons la proposition euh, d'amendement faite par le Qatar. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, Madame. Et maintenant, je passe la parole à la délégation de la Fédération de Russie. Madame l'ambassadeur. Спасибо большое. Уважаемые коллеги, Российская Федерация также приветствует те усилия, которые предпринимает Египет для консервации столь важного для всего человеческого объекта, как Абумена, несмотря на те непростые условия политические, экономические, которые сейчас есть в этой стране. И мы хотели бы поддержать идею Катара, отметить в решении меры предпринятые Египтом для консервации столь важного объекта. Спасибо. Merci beaucoup, Madame l'Ambassadeur. Maintenant, je passe la parole à la délégation du Mali. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Vu les différents efforts consentis par l'État parti, la délégation malienne soutient la proposition de Qatar. Merci. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Et je passe la parole à la délégation de la Suisse qui sera suivie par le Japon. Merci, monsieur le président. La Suisse aimerait également remercier l'État parti de ses engagements entrepris pour améliorer l'état de conservation de ce bien. Toutefois, nous devons noter qu'il y a des problèmes compliqués qui persistent euh, notamment les dépôts de sel euh, qui menacent euh, les structures archéologiques et également il y a un, un plan de gestion qui doit être euh, établi et euh, c'est pour cela que euh, nous sommes tout à fait d'accord d'intégrer un article dans la décision qui remercie et qui salue les efforts de l'état parti par contre en ce qui concerne un futur retrait de la liste du, euh, du bien de la liste euh, en péril nous pensons qu'il faut d'abord voir que l'état euh, de conservation souhaité euh, et qui a été défini euh, auparavant doivent être euh, atteints et, et, et c'est à ce moment là euh, qu'on peut commencer à discuter du retrait du bien de la liste du patrimoine en péril et je suis convaincu que les organisations consultatives ensemble avec le centre du patrimoine mondial vont faire tout pour que cet état puisse être atteint dans le délai le plus bref. Merci monsieur le président. Merci à vous monsieur. Je, je suis sûr bien sûr que le secrétaire est en train de prendre bonne note de tout ce commentaire. Et maintenant je passe la parole à la délégation du Japon, monsieur l'ambassadeur. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, upon the information uh, now provided by the Egyptian delegation, uh, Japan would like to support the Qatari proposal. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur. Maintenant, je passe la parole à la délégation de l'Allemagne. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to express our support for the spirit of the draft amendments proposed by the distinguished delegate of Qatar, but I would like to um, call on the committee to be consistent in, in the wording of, uh, the, of the decision. We have in para 8 the wording also regrets that no progress has been made in recent years and so on. So if we would like, if we want to recognize the progress which has been made, this should be changed, and maybe we can integrate the new paragraph three proposed by Qatar into this sentence, something like also takes note of the progress that has been made in recent years, uh, in, and uh, in particular uh, the dewatering, I think it was, and, uh, encourage. and encourage the state party to continue its efforts. And again, um, I would like to give to the consideration of the distinguished members of the committee whether it is necessary to have a new para 12 on a future decision which still is not, I mean, what can we say about a future decision? I would be more on 
highlighting the positive and streamlining the decision as proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And now I would like to invite the Secretariat and the Rapporteur to uh, put on the screens the amendments as they were presented, since we are, of course, uh, discussing on the text. So please, Madam the Rapporteur. Uh, until um, until we were waiting uh, Qatar to uh, give us uh, written we we did the right uh, version and I would like you to see and I would like Secretariat just to add um, that it was uh, supported by Germany and, J and Japan the proposition of Qatar and now we are going to add so if you can wait a little bit or you can look what we did thank you There is a point of order of the Russian delegation, Madam. Уважаемые коллеги, вот мы с моим коллегой смотрим на экраны и не можем понять, что и кому показывает на этих экранах. Какой-то новодел, что нельзя было показать реально, как выглядит этот объект. Вы показали какие-то стройки, камни, и совершенно непонятно, о чем мы говорим. Если те, кто не знает, пожалуйста, это относится не только в данном случае к, Еби, к, Е, к Египту, но и ко всем другим э, объектам. Вы всегда показываете что-то такое вот непонятное. Поэтому, пожалуйста, в следующий раз хоть немножечко, так сказать, покажите. Это же действительно великое место. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Uh, uh, again, I would like to ask the Secretariat to uh, try to put it on the screen, the text, for the revision of the committee members, please. Je vois la délégation d'Irak qui souhaite prendre la parole, madame. اسم الدول التي دعمت هذا القرار منها العراق والهند ومالي فيرجى إضافة أسماء الدول. شكرا. Vous avez tout à fait raison, madame, bien sûr. Donc, euh, je au collègue des secrétariats de, de procéder tel qu'il a été demandé et la France souhaiterait prendre la parole c'était juste pour ça d'accord très bien Okay, now the colleagues of the Secretary, they are including on the text the, the, the proposed amendments. So in the meantime, if there are some further comments of the ECOMOS representatives, uh, I would like to offer you the floor if you have some further question, uh, comments on this. If not the case, I would like to offer the floor to the delegation of Mali. Uh, yes, Chairman, we have some countries who are missed here, and they've been supporting the, the proposal done by Qatar, like India, like France.
la représentante du Centre de patrimoine mondial souhaite prendre la parole. Oui, madame, allez-y, s'il vous plaît. Uh, uh, but uh, first I have a point of order of the Russian Federation. Уважаемые коллеги, я вот смотрю, мы опять требуем от State Party, чтобы они к 1 февраля 2014 года дали детальный отчет о прогрессе в применении вот этих вот рекомендаций. Ну, страна находится в непростой ситуации. Почему мы должны, значит, их сейчас заставлять вот через шесть месяцев опять предоставлять вот этот отчет? Может быть, здесь можно пойти навстречу и к первому февраля пятнадцатого года это сделать? Потому что я вот немножко не понимаю логику, почему мы так все время требуем каждый год, каждый год одно и то же. Спасибо. Это же деньги стоят. Это все стоит деньги. Спасибо. Merci beaucoup, Madame l'Ambassadeur. Euh, je passe la parole, la parole à l'Afrique du Sud. Et en attendant, bien sûr, toujours les collègues du secrétariat pour refléter les amendements. Vous avez la parole, l'Afrique du Sud. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I support the, uh, the recommendation made by Qatar. Uh, if you can just scroll up a little bit to back to that. Uh, I think it's number. Yes, I, I support uh, uh, together with the many other countries that have supported it. However, I'd like to say probably can we... Uh, substitute the word thanks with commend the state party for uh, and continue. Just uh, change thanks to commend. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. I see the United Emirates Arabs that would like to take the floor. So, sir, please proceed. شكرا سيد الرئيس نظرا للظروف التي تمر بها مصر و نظرا لما عرضها سعادة السفير من الجدية في بذل كل الجهود التي طلبت منهم أنا أرى أثني على المقترح الروسي في إعطائهم مهلة كافية لتنفيذ هذه المهمة Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Je vois l'Algérie. Madame, vous avez la parole. Merci, monsieur le président. Je vous avoue que je suis un peu perdue puisque je ne retrouve pas la proposition du Qatar, à moins que... Oui, je suis perdue. Je ne la retrouve pas, la proposition du Qatar. Euh, à laquelle nous souscrivons pleinement. Bien entendu, il s'agit d'encourager de, euh, l'État parti euh, à poursuivre ses efforts pour accéder à la sortie du péril. Et nous espérons que cette sortie sera prochaine. Et je souscris également à la proposition de la République de Russie. Effectivement, il conviendrait de prendre en considération les conditions euh, sociopolitiques euh, actuelles de l'Égypte et, 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 de, et de déclarer et de demander un rapport dans des délais raisonnables. On ne peut pas demander un rapport sur six mois à un pays euh, qui connaît ce genre de problème. Et nous, sous, nous souscrivons à la proposition de la Russie, nous la soutenons. Et nous proposons qu'un rapport soit remué au moins en 2015. Merci, Merci Monsieur beaucoup, le Président. Madame. Euh, je vois le délégué du Mexique qui souhaite prendre la parole, suivi de l'Estonie, le Qatar et la Suisse. Donc, euh, Mexico tient la parole. Merci, Président. Nous aussi. Nos sumamos a la propuesta de la Federación de Rusia y eh, quisiera hacer un comentario en la redacción entre el punto 3 y 4. No sé si estoy leyendo yo mal, pero se está hablando eh, de 
efectos devastadores, no sé si podrán bajar, bajar al punto 3, 4. A ver. Eh, se está metiendo una enmienda eh, que está elogiando al Estado parte por los trabajos, pero está inmersa en puntos que habla sobre efectos devastadores, la necesidad de hacer un eh, informe, eh, habla del desmantelamiento de la, y de reconstrucciones inapropiadas. Creo que el 3.4 habría que ponerlo um, antes del 3 o que se convierta en 3 o, o reubicarlo. No sé si estoy equivocándome y estoy leyendo mal. Muchas gracias, delegado de México. Ahora eh, ofrezco la palabra a la delegación de Estonia. Por favor. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chair. Estonia would also like to um, welcome the efforts made by Egypt in as concerns with property. But uh, we also would like to note that uh, the committee uh, is bound by its own um, <clears throat> rules and regulations and operational guidelines, paragraph 190, says that the committee shall review annually the state of conservation of properties on the list of world heritage in danger. And I would also uh, like to say that, um, that uh, the desired state of conservation needs to be reached before we can speak about uh, uh, delisting it from the list of world heritage in danger. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, for your comments. Now I give the floor to Switzerland. Uh, that will be followed for Qatar. So, Switzerland, please, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je peux être bref. La Suisse soutient pleinement ce qui vient de dire notre collègue de l'Estonie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, Monsieur. Maintenant, la délégation de Qatar. شكرا سيد الرئيس بالنسبة لكلمة الشكر إذا أردنا أن نغيرها فممكن تكون recognize باللغة الإنجليزية نقترح صيغة أخرى وهناك أعتقد أيضا في المادة الثامنة في مشروع القرار يعني المادة الثامنة نجدها أنها يعني صعبة أو أو صياغتها فيها يعني يعني كلمات ممكن ممكن تغيير صياغتها لتكون مقبولة أكثر فيما يخص الدولة العضو يعني نجد نجد الفقرة الثامنة أنها شديدة نوعا ما فأحب إذا لو نفكر في تخفيف صياغتها شكرا Merci beaucoup Monsieur l'Ambassadeur now I would like to give the floor to the distinguished delegation of India that will be followed for uh, the representative of ICOMOS that wishes to present some clarification. So please, Mr. Ambassador, proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I, I agree with what has just been said. I mean, you would not submit an illogical boundary. That's the point. But if you go further down, um, it's not very clear um, that the committee is asking for something. If you go to the last paragraph, I'm all for automaticity of action, but I think the committee needs to do something. It needs to recommend, it needs to endorse, it needs to... At present, the committee is not doing anything. Somehow it's just happening by itself. So I think you need to look at that paragraph. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And before giving the floor to ECOMOS, I would like to give the floor to the delegation of Germany. Please. No? Ah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just uh, answering to the intervention of the distinguished delegate of, of Egypt, the wording and in, uh, sorry, of India. Um, <laughs> and the wording we have proposed for per, new, for former paragraph eight, now it's paragraph seven. In this wording, 
the uh, uh, committee takes note of progress and encourages the, uh, the, the state party to continue its efforts. So here the committee takes uh, position and takes action. I think this is, if we adopt this, then the Indian concern is included. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, now I give the floor to the representative of ICOMOS for the clarifications. Please, madam. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, ICOMOS was merely wanting to clarify the requirements of the operational guidelines, which actually the delegate from Germany has already uh, done, and also Estonia. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. India. Yeah, um, I think your solution is um, paragraph 11, which is hanging, which is not nice, uh, is actually a part of paragraph 9. Should the detailed progress, should those actions be taken, should the state party meet, um, then the property could be considered for removal. So you're actually, if you place it there, you will solve a lot of the problems. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Let me try to Spanish one second. Eh, teniendo en cuenta los, eh, los importantes comentarios que se han suscitado a propósito de este tema, eh, Suiza quiere, quiere intervenir, quiere tomar la palabra en este momento. Entonces, eh, paso la palabra a la delegación de Suiza y después eh, voy a hacer una propuesta. Suiza, por favor. Merci, monsieur le président. Eh, J'aimerais revenir sur ce qui est maintenant en français, le paragraphe eh, 13, la proposition du paragraphe 13, qui, à, à notre avis, devrait être, être euh, biffé, euh, car euh, ce n'est pas euh, la condition n'est pour un retrait de la liste en péril n'est pas que l'État parti remplit les conditions, mais que l'état de conservation souhaité est atteint. Et si tel est le cas, le bien est automatiquement retiré de la liste en péril lors de la session du comité qui traite cette question. Donc euh, ce paragraphe euh, n'a pas lieu d'être et donc nous demandons qu'il soit supprimé. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à vous, Monsieur. Ahora, eh, teniendo en cuenta, como decía hace un minuto, los importantes comentarios que se han suscitado a propósito de este debate, así como la necesidad de que, lo, de que cada uno de ellos sea, por supuesto, reflejado de la mejor manera en el proyecto de decisión y teniendo en cuenta que no podemos ir eh, eh, punto de orden de la delegación de Rusia. Уважаемые коллеги, а я считаю, что 13 пункт э, можно оставить, потому что это такой, ну, своеобразная надежда, что вот когда все будет сделано, это очень хороший, э, очень хороший пункт для местных властей, для что когда все усилия будут э, и все условия будут выполнены, они будут выключены из списка. Не более того, это не значит, что мы завтра, может быть, убрать next э, session. Uh, it's another uh, story. Но uh, я бы оставила этот пункт и поддерживаю Катар, чтобы оставить этот пункт. Как поощрительный. Та спасибо. Gracias, señora embajadora. Ahora paso la palabra a la delegación de India. Thank you, Chair. I do have to point out that there are at least six draft resolutions which will come up where uh, between the advisory bodies, thank you, and the World Heritage Center, they have suggested that if you don't do X, Y, and Z, you will, be de uh, you will be put on the list of danger. So if you have that approach, then you should certainly uh, provide the encouragement as well. So you can't be uh, one or the other, you have to be both. Mm, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, the last speakers uh, will be Estonia, followed by Colombia. So, Estonia, please Germany, take the floor. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Estonia, Mr. Chair. Please. We just wanted to comment that if we leave this paragraph 13, we should change the wording that uh, instead of above-mentioned conditions, it should read uh, desired state of conservation. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Eh, teniendo en cuenta, vuelvo a señalar lo siguiente. Eh, tenemos un problema y es que el tiempo se nos está agotando por el día de hoy. Insisto en que, por supuesto, los comentarios que se han generado son muy importantes y queremos, por supuesto, que sean reflejados de la mejor manera dentro del proyecto de decisión 
teniendo en cuenta cada uno de los comentarios que han sido presentados por cada una de las delegaciones. Teniendo en cuenta, sin embargo, el problema eh, técnico de que llegamos, estamos llegando al final de la sesión de hoy, entonces quisiera proponerles que eh, la Secretaría tome buena nota, por supuesto, de cada una de las enmiendas y los comentarios que se están proponiendo dentro del texto para que mañana a primera hora, si alguna de las delegaciones que está eh, interesada, por supuesto, en este tema, eh, se pone en contacto con el relator para llegar a un texto de consenso, entonces mañana a primera hora estaríamos aprobando este proyecto de decisión y entonces ahora paso la palabra a la Secretaría para eh, que nos, de, a, nos hagan algunos anuncios técnicos. Eh, sin embargo, por supuesto, mañana eh, tomaremos en cuenta los comentarios de las delegaciones que eh, por el problema del tiempo eh, en este momento no lo pueden hacer. Así que paso la palabra a la Secretaría para que nos des las informaciones complementarias. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. There are two announcements for site events now. One is for the Japanese site event and exhibition, which takes place in the Champei uh, room on the third floor. And another one for uh, now is from WWF, which is in the Romdul room on the first floor, which is the uh, opening ceremony room on emerging threats to natural world heritage sites. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Maran. So uh, we will resume tomorrow morning at uh, the delegation of India. You, please, Ambassador. Thank you, Chair. I beg your indulgence because what I'm going to say, I think, has some bearing on tomorrow. And I think we should do that today to allow for the time. Uh, 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 sir, we, we actually have spent a day. We've spent time, um, you know, in hope and optimism. This is the fifth decade of the World Heritage Convention. And we've been moving towards um, a system where, in a very collegial fashion, the World Heritage Center, the advisory bodies, and member states are working towards making the the convention more efficient, more transparent. Uh, Mr. Chair, I refer you to Rule uh, 52 of the Rules of Procedure. The committee may suspend the application of any of the Rules of Procedure. And I ask you to look at Rules 22.5, 22.6, and 22.7 of the same Rules of Procedure. Essentially, state parties are, at this point of time, um, not encouraged, not allowed to take the floor on issues, on nominations, on state of conservation reports that affect them. Over the past year, in fact, over the past two years, there have been discussions on this. Member states have asked for this. By and large, there has been a consensus, in fact, a growing consensus, that state parties must be allowed to represent their case. Mr. Chairman, I think that there comes a time when you must seize the opportunity. The hypocrisy which is inherent in asking other state parties to ask questions on your behalf is something that we need to, over time, do away with. We need to save time, and I think we will save time. We need to get a correct picture, and we need not to differentiate between state parties that are members of the committee and those that are not. So I would suggest that on an experimental basis, and at least till the rules of procedure, which of course a very competent group will look at, um, till that is done on an experimental basis, and to benefit, to review from the valuable experience that we will gain, that we carry out these actions of suspending rules 22.5, 22.6, and 22.7 of the rules of procedure. I believe, Mr. Chair, that we could do this on the basis of a two-thirds majority, you may not even need a roll call vote. You may do it by a show of hands. Mr. Chair, I think this is important enough so that we are ready and prepared for tomorrow when the state of the conservation reports will be taken up and, of course, in due course, the nomination and inscription um, um, uh, processes that will come after that. Thank you, Chair. Russian Federation, please take the floor. Уважаемые коллеги, мы поддерживаем это предложение Индии. Мы это обсуждали практически в течение года. 
что мы действительно ведем какую-то странную игру. Мы заранее готовим вопросы, какие-то ответы, стране строго даем одну минуту, когда он не может ничего сказать. Это весьма неуважительно к стране. Поэтому мы предлагаем в качестве эксперимента, на который потом по результатам посмотрит та же группа по оперативному руководству, насколько это эффективно, правильно или неправильно. Мы ничего не теряем. Мне кажется, что на одну сессию мы вполне можем это себе позволить. Спасибо. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, now I give the floor to Estonia. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Estonia uh, do not agree with a proposal as made. For the simple reason that we are afraid uh, we might lose credibility by doing so. And uh, actually, there is nothing in the present um, uh, rules of procedure on the point 22, 5, 6, and 7 that actually forbids the state party to answer questions, specific questions. But what it uh, forbids to do is to uh, recourse to advocacy and this is something that we have also witnessed. And I believe that this issue we are dealing with, it really uh, comes from the issue of calendar, and it has boosted this very problematic tendency that countries indeed provide a lot of new information at the session, but uh, we need to be aware that this cannot be properly evaluated on the spot by the advisory bodies and by the committee. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Now I give the floor to the delegation of Germany, followed by Iraq and Algeria. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to be brief because it's very late. Uh, Germany supports uh, the intervention which has been just voiced by the distinguished uh, delegate of uh, Estonia. And uh, anyway, Germany is not in favor of taking such a basic, major change decision just at surprise at night when we want to go to the Japanese uh, exhibition. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Iraq, followed by Algeria. Japan, and the last speaker on the list will be point of order of Russia. Madam, please. Дорогие коллеги, спасибо большое. Как раз я считаю, что сейчас ничего обсуждать не надо. Это дано вам на осмысление, и завтра мы вернемся к этому вопросу. Я думаю, мы быстро решим, что делать. Зачем сейчас это обсуждать? Это как повод подумать. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. So, with the indulgence of the distinguished delegate of India, uh, we take note of this uh, very important, of your very important proposal, of course. So, uh, I want uh, to propose to the delegation of India, uh, since I think we are uh, uh, getting a common position on this, to uh, resume the meeting tomorrow, of course, and we will. Uh, start with uh, this, this, this proposal. So uh, I thank you, Mr. Ambassador, if uh, this is acceptable for you in the spirit of uh, working for the committee. Mr. Ambassador. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, the, I was proposing um, food for thought. The distinguished delegate of Russia proposed thought for food. I think we can do both and do it tomorrow morning. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Then we will resume tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.